Lanes of Ro Rodney Epling and Shannon Harper of Spencer. Next senior, Russell May. Russell is the son of Scott and Kelly May of Spencer. Sean Conrad. Hey, last JV game it worked fine. But I said the last JV game it worked fine, but that's been a couple weeks. So. I don't know. You got double zeros up there. Sean's the son of. That's a, that's a bit of a something. Jason and Trina Conrad of Spencer. Landon Whited. Landon is the son of Michael and Amy Whited from Gay. And our last football senior, Toby Copen. Toby's the son of Barbara Weiss and James Copen from Reedy. And the last one, affiliate with football, another manager, Macy Burdett. <laughs> Macy is the daughter of Paul and Angie Burdett of Spencer. Ladies and gentlemen, that is our senior class for the 2021 season <coughs> of our football team. Give me a big hand. Our next group will be the seniors from the band. Our first band senior may sound familiar, Macy Burnett. 
you don't remember, she's a daughter of Paul and Andy Burdett of Spencer. Next we have Daisy Burke. She's the daughter of Craig and Lynn Jerkovich of Newton. Burr. My goodness, it's cold out there. Let's <laughs> crank that heater up here a minute. Our next senior, Shayla Claypool. Daughter of By the way, Jeff we're live. and Annette Claypool of Spencer. <laughs> Next we have Ethan Fields. Ethan is the son of Nathan Surface in Yana Fields of New York. He is being escorted tonight by his grandmother, Lydia Surface of Newton. Senior, Jade Mallory. She's the daughter of Nicole Mallory of Newton. son of Jeff and Beth Tanner of Gandyville. Hey George, how's it going buddy? Doing well. Hey, they're doing senior night, so I'm going to throw the uh, headset back outside here so you can kind of hear it, and then I'll holler at you about 7.04, okay? Senior, okay. All right. Lucas Westfall. Lucas is the son of Chris and Andrea Westfall of Spencer. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our 2021 senior class for our band. Let's give them a hand. cheerleaders. Our first cheerleader is Nikki Allen. Nikki is being escorted tonight by her mom Kimberly Allen, brother Daniel Allen, and sister-in-law Hannah Smith of Walden. Nikki has been a Raider varsity cheerleader for three years. Her future plans include attending Marshall University to study nursing to become a traveling nurse. Next we have Kennedy Lawson. Kennedy is being escorted this evening by her mother, Alicia Lawson of Spencer. 
Kenny has been a Raider varsity cheerleader for three years. Her future plans include attending Marsh University to study physical therapy. Next we have Carrie Remy. Carrie's being escorted tonight by her mother, Kim Bailey of Spencer. Carrie has been a race Raider varsity cheerleader for three years. She plans to attend Glenville State College to study exercise science. All right, George, where are we at, buddy? Okay. Ready when you are, buddy. Our last senior cheerleader, Calista, otherwise known as Callie Williams. Being escorted by her parents, Bo and Ashley Williams of Spencer. Callie has been a Raider varsity cheerleader for four years. Lanolin. Lanolin, tip of the tongue to the top of the teeth. Scotch, scotch, scotch. I like scotch. San Diego. Give us a wooden ship. All right, we're going live on Facebook. <clears throat> Check. Check. <clears throat> Check. 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 Cash my checks. Cash my checks. Crank him all the way up. Had to get closer. <clears throat> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number 11, the final week of the regular season for high school football across the great state of West Virginia. As fans of this great sport, each year it is difficult to wrap our minds around the fact that high school football seems to fly by yearly. Tonight will signal the end of the season for a full 64 teams in the state from the three classes. Only 16 teams in class single A, double A, and triple A will continue their seasons into the second week of November for the 2021 West Virginia High School Football State Playoffs. And although many of the teams that will be in the playoffs next week already know they have qualified, there are still battles to be waged at the tail end of the top 16, and there is still much jockeying for position that will be decided at the end of this final regular season Friday night. Tonight in Roan County, as we enter the first Friday night in November, the weather has taken a turn for the tundra, with temperatures dipping into the 40s by kickoff at 7.30 p.m. 
However, no freezing temperatures can deter the Roan County Raider football team from their goal to finish another week of the football season at 1-0. and That is the simple goal. But tonight, the Raiders have even more motivation. While they are all but guaranteed a place in the Class AA playoff field, a win tonight would make a big difference in the landing spot. Many believe that the ceiling for the Raiders is just outside of the top eight, and a win would secure a solid seed. But a loss could plummet the Raiders into the bottom of the 16 available spots, which would mean a trip to the home field of one of the top teams in the state next week. But beyond all of that, though, tonight is senior night for the 2021 edition of the Rome County Raider football team. Tonight, we have, had, we have the privilege to honor seven wonderful young men who have faced so much adversity in their young lives and have stood tall in the face of overwhelming obstacles. Seven young men who have given so much of themselves to this program in the pursuit of a higher goal for the team. These seven Special Raider football players came in as freshmen and helped Roan County rebuild following an 0-10 season, getting the Raiders back to the Class AA playoffs where they truly belong. Senior night is always special here in Roan County, but tonight may just mean a little more. What this wonderful group of seniors has helped this team accomplish this year and what is possible tonight is the best regular season record in program history, accomplished only twice before in 2010 and 2011 at 8 and 2. Tonight, seven seniors will take the field at County Stadium for the final time in their careers. To those seniors, Shadrach Greathouse, Ethan Collins, Lane Epling, Russell May, Sean Conrad, Landon Whited, and Toby Copen, we can say only thank you. Rome County, it's time to kick the tires and light the bonfires. It's time for Raider football live from beautiful County Stadium on the campus of Rome County High School. Raider football is once again on the air from Reedy to Walton, Newton to Spencer, and all points in between. We welcome you to WVRC 104.7 FM's live coverage of your Roan County Raiders. Andrew Miller, Matt White, Joe Boots Blosser, Katie Nutter ready to bring you guys all the action tonight on senior night and week number 11, Matt White, the final week of the regular season for teams around the state. It isn't as if, it's not if Roan County's gonna be in, it's where they will be at the end of tonight. Yeah, the first thing you've gotta take care of though is what is on the field tonight. The jockeying for position is one thing, I mean, we have an outside chance to host a game. Now, that being said, we need a lot of help. Three teams ahead of us, North Marion, uh, Nicholas County, Robert C. Bird, all have games tonight that I would consider more than likely very winnable for all three of those schools. Scott as well, the team that we are tied with at number nine, playing weaker opponents, but you know, you never know. I mean, we could have another one of those situations like years back when uh, you had Mingo Central uh, rest, air quote, their <laughs> varsity team yes. going into the final game, and somebody might make a huge jump. I mean, you never know what's going to happen. All you can control is what is right here in front of you tonight, and for Roan County, that is Sissonville, a team that scares me just a little bit. Throw out that 2-7 and seven record. These guys, they've got some big physical linemen. They've got uh, a two-headed quarterback system. You know, you've got a lefty in Ethan Taylor, and the uh, the incumbent righty was uh, uh, Brody Thompson. Those guys are going to work back and forth a little bit. They like to wing the ball around three, four, wide, uh, five wide sets <clears throat> all, all over the place. So, you know, we've really got to watch out. Uh, you, you were telling me before, they have lost to the number one, the number three, the number nine. Six, nine and 12 yeah in double a that's a murder's row of tough opponents for sissonville i mean so throw that completely out the window they've got nothing to they've got nothing to play for do they except what if they come in here and get some retribution a few years back that group with uh danny bush and josh huffman that led a 99 yard drive to knock sissonville out of the playoffs that year this team there's some guys on there that I'm sure remember that and would really like 
to get a little bit of retribution against Roan County. No doubt about it. Roan County remembers that 2019 game so magical after the season that the Raiders had with the uh, loss of Alex Miller. And that was the finish and the cap to just an amazing run for that Raider team. <clears throat> Many of these seniors, very close with Alex. Many of these seniors were on the field that night for that ball game. And so... Although Sissonville has a lot to play for, maybe some retribution, Roan County knows what's at stake right now here tonight. They know that they're playing for seeding in the postseason. Uh, they know they have an opportunity to get a higher seed. Uh, they know they have a chance to make this series even at 9-9. Nine and nine. These two teams, by the way, played every single year since the inception of Roan County High School from 1993 to 2008. They went away from each other until two years ago, and Roan County gets the victory uh, two years ago last Last year, obviously, the game was scrubbed due to the coronavirus. So these two teams back at it uh, for the 18th time in school history. First-year head coach for Sissonville, Chad Lovejoy, uh, replaces a very good coach. Last year, they were 5-1 and one and made the playoffs in that COVID-shortened season. Uh, I tell you, I was looking back at the uh, – uh, the coaching scenario for this uh, Sissonville team. They had one coach from the first year they started playing football in 1935 until 1970. Joe Sawyer was their only coach for 35 full years. That's and a after, tenure. Yeah, after that, there was another one for about 20 years until they started uh, rotating some coaches. So uh, it's going to be a very interesting matchup. Again, Roan County knows what's at stake. They need to play loose fired up, and, of course, controlled aggression on defense. They have to make plays on offense. They cannot uh, come out slowly against a team, as Matt said, that's looking for any sort of motivation, any sort of spark to uh, a possible upset victory here tonight on Roan County Cedar tonight. The Raiders do not want to give that up. Roan County wants to ride into the playoffs at 8-2 and two with some momentum. We'll see if they can do it. When we return from our uh, break, we're going to take some uh, time for our sponsors. When we come back, more pregame coverage, including the coach's interview with head coach Paul Burdett after these messages. Hold on just a second there, George. Let's hope it doesn't blow up your phone, Katie. Folks, I'm standing here in the end zone with Coach Paul Burdett. Coach, uh, this is a uh, obviously a big night for you guys. Uh, this is a very important night for you. We're going to start our interview with Head Coach Paul Burdett in five, four, three, two. Hmm? All right, welcome back, folks. I'm standing here in the end zone. With Coach Paul Burdett, Coach, uh, this is a uh, obviously a big night for you guys. Uh, this is a very important night for you guys, but uh, it's a chance to honor seven wonderful seniors uh, who have uh, led this resurgence of this program. I mentioned in the pregame, Coach, that uh, when they came in as, as freshmen, uh, this group were, was coming off an 0 and 10 season. You guys have made it all the way back to where you are, uh, basically headed to the playoffs. Uh, what does it mean for you to uh, to get to watch these guys one more? time on this field uh, it's just special drew uh, they're a good group of kids and uh, you know they've worked hard for four years and they're deserving of of everything they get uh, everything they've earned I won't say get they've earned it all uh, but they're a very deserving group uh, great just a great group of kids uh, you know everybody says they have good kids but we've got good kids and and our seniors are as good as they come, and, and they're definitely going to be missed. Obviously, we know that this is an important night. Uh, it, as you've mentioned to us every single game, the most important part about it is is it's another opportunity to go one and oh. Uh, that's number one on your all's mind, right? Uh, that's the only thing that matters. You know, one and oh, and, and whatever happens after that, then uh, we'll deal with that as it comes. But it's tonight's about beating Sissonville and coming out here one and oh and, and finishing this thing off right. You guys do have a chance to finish off the regular season tied for the best record uh, in school history, 2010-2011. Uh, you were a part of the, uh, uh, the, the staff back then. Uh, does this group uh, mirror that group at all, or is this a different kind of team? 
Well, I think every group is different. Um, but j just the, the style of offense we run and the things we do uh, really reminds me a lot of 2010 uh, and, and the physicality part of it. And, and not taking away, any, anything away from 2011, uh, it was just a, a little bit different scenario with those guys and the things we did. Um, but uh, like I said, each group's their own, and uh, you know these guys have really come out and, and blazed the path for themselves this year and made a name for who they are. Speaking of styles, uh, your opponent here tonight, Sissonville, this is a very difficult offense to handle. Uh, you, again, you can avoid the 2-7 the and seven record they play in a conference that is very difficult. Uh, five of their losses have come to teams that are probably going to be in the playoffs. Uh, it's just one of those things where 2-7 and seven needs to be out of the back of your mind. You need to watch the film and do what you're supposed to do. Yeah, you know, we, we haven't talked about record all week long. And there's really no need to, you know, you turn the film on, you're, you're going to see a group of kids uh, that fly around on the field every play. Uh, you know, they're, they're physical and they got a good scheme on both sides of the ball and they work hard at it. Uh, we got to come out and, and, and take care of that uh, with what we do on both sides of the ball and, uh, you know, be physical. That's been a, a, a deal for us each game this year is to out physical our opponents. And, and it's going to be a big deal here tonight. All the way into the 10th game of the season, Coach Burdett. Your team has been relatively healthy to this point, coming into this final game of the season. This might uh, this might be one of those years that it's uh, just you're, it's almost a head scratcher. Yeah, I, it's uh, very uncommon to be this deep and not have any major injuries or you know somebody being out or this or that. But uh, we've been very fortunate. God's blessed us this year, and uh, we've stayed uh, you know for the most part very healthy and. And that's been a big reason for our success too, Drew. Well, Coach, it is a very big night here for you guys. And, again, it's great to honor these seven seniors. We wish you the best of luck. Let's go out there and let's get 8-2 and two and 1-0. and oh. Thanks, Drew. We appreciate it. Head Coach Paul Burdett, folks, stick around after these messages. More pre Hello, Washington State. All right. I'm saying this how they logging. My body got rid of them toxins. 
Oh, because of And we welcome you back to County Stadium as we get set for the opening kick here. Final Friday night of the regular season. We apologize to those of you who are tuning in on our Facebook live feed. Uh, our Facebook live feed got shut down because of the music that was playing in the background. We're hoping that it doesn't happen again. So everybody who was uh, listening or watching us before, uh, please come over here to the one that says part two, and hopefully we won't get shut down again for the music in the background. Just one of those things you got to deal with if you're trying to go live. You just can't be uh, copyright infringing people, I guess. And uh, so we're going to try to talk through and talk over all the music that's being played here tonight. While we've got a second, let's take a look at the starting lineups for both of these teams first off on offense for the Sissonville Indians. Yeah, like I said in the pregame, we're going to see a lot of spread offense from these guys. The big men up front, 5'10", 242-pound sophomore Lazaro Marquez Jr., the left guard, a 5'10", 265-pound senior Seth Patton, and the center, a 6'1", 280-pound senior Hunter Chapman, the right guard, a 5'9", 230-pound senior Dakota Latea. And the right tackle, the 5'9", 200-pound junior, Hunter Skidmore. Three wide, we got 5'9", 185-pound senior, Brody Thompson. We might see him play some quarterback as well in this ballgame. The other split, 6'8", 180-pound sophomore, Jacob Wiseman, the leading receiver on this Sissonville team. The slot receiver, 5'8", 155-pound senior, Braden Purdue. And the wing H-back Sniffer, as John Penna calls him. Uh, it's a 5'11", 190-pound senior, solid-looking kid, Dylan Lucas. In the backfield, the 5'7", 155-pound speedster, junior, Cameron Arbogast. And the quarterback for the moment, we'll say, for this Sissonville team, the 5'10", 145-pound sophomore, Ethan Taylor. Roan County's defense will be tested here tonight through the air, we imagine, as well as on the ground. Here are your defensive front for the Raiders. Defensive ends, Landon Whited, the senior, goes 6 foot, 255 pounds, and Christian Jarvis, a 6 foot, 210 pound junior. Jacob Bunner is in the middle for the Raider front, 6 foot, 1, 270 pound sophomore. Your Viper hybrid back is Russell May, the senior, 5'7", 140 pounds. Your Cobra, also the hybrid, is Shadrach Greathouse, the senior goes 5'9", 170. 70 pounds. Backers for the Raiders. Briar Begler, one junior on the outside at 5'8", 160. The other junior on the outside is Skylar Delk, the 5'10", 170 pound junior. Middle backer manning the middle of that defensive back uh, area is Colton Paxton, the junior 6'185 pounds. In the defensive backfield for the Raiders, one corner, Ethan Collins, 5'7", 140 pound senior. And Sean Conrad having a tremendous season at corner. The senior goes 5'9", 160. Lane Epling is your safety, a 5'10", 160-pound so, uh, senior. A uh, base 4-3 defense for Sissonville. We probably will see some five-man front, uh, four backers, eight, nine men in the box trying to slow down the dynamic duo of Delk and Begler. But up front, uh, the left defensive end for the Sissonville Indians, a 5'11", 240-pound junior. Please forgive me if I butcher this. Damon Ian Amorelli, the defensive tackle, 5'10", 242-pound sophomore. Lazaro Marquez, Jr., the other tackle, 5'10", 265-pound senior. Seth Patton, and the right defensive end, a 5'9", 
170-pound junior Michael Fisher. The three backers on the outside, 5'7", 155-pound junior Cameron Arbogast. The middle backer, 5'9", 196-pound senior Hunter Burdett. And the other backer, 5'9", 200-pound junior Hunter Skidmore. The two corners, 5'8", 155-pound senior Braden Purdue. On the opposite side to 5'9", 142 pound sophomore Evan Taylor. The two safeties, 6 foot, 180 pound sophomore Jacob Wiseman. And the other free safety of 5'10", 160 pound senior Braden Murray. As you see, the Raiders come out, the seniors, all seven of them will be captains, and they come out back in black. And that is a tradition for Roan County. Uh, it's been good for the Raider jerseys of black. They play well in these uniforms traditionally. Let's hope they will once again tonight. Along the front line for the Raiders, this has been the dominant force throughout the year for the Raiders. Left tackle Christian Jarvis, 6 foot, 210 pound junior. Left guard Jacob Bunner, 6 foot, 1, 270 pound sophomore. Center Matthew Schaefer, 6 foot, 1, 230 pound junior. Right guard Landon Whited, 6 foot, 255 pound senior. Right tackle Toby Cope. And six foot, 265 pound senior. Those are the hogs up front. Tight end is Colton Paxton, the six foot, 185 pound junior. Split end, Lane Epling, five foot, 10, 165 pound senior. The whiteout is Sean Conrad, 5'9", 160 pound senior. In the backfield for the Raiders, the two headed monster of Skylar Delk, the 5'10", 170 pound junior. And Briar Begler, the 5'8", 160 pound junior, went over 1,000 yards for the season last week. Delk is just 71 yards away from making it there himself. The quarterback is Shadrach Greathouse. The senior is 5'9", 170 pounds. As we mentioned, Roan County in the black uniforms for senior night. Jerseys and pants with gray numbers, really actually silver numbers for the Raiders. Maroon helmets with the white Raider are on both sides. For the Indians, Sissonville with all white jerseys and pants, bright red numbers, bright red letters, and bright red helmets with the S and the arrow sticking through the S. For Sissonville, Roan County at seven and two. Reverse that for the Indians. They are two and seven. But again, take away the thoughts of them not being a good team. They play in a very difficult conference, the Cardinal Conference. They've lost to number one, number three, number nine, number 12, and number 18, Winfield, who's fighting for a playoff spot tonight as well. It looks as if the Raiders will win the toss, and as per usual, they will go on offense to begin the ball game. Yeah, you just gotta love the black jerseys. It's a throwback to the days of old. You know, we always talk to John. He, he would love to uh, get a new set of these blacks <laughs> if we can uh, get Coach Burdett on board with that would be fantastic. Like you said, a lot of history with these black uniforms, though. Some big games played and won for Roan County. Epling, or sorry, uh, Collins and Greathouse jump it up, and that signals Roan County hitting the field as they will here on Senior Night. We'll go high definition now. Hopefully the music won't shut down our broadcast. Of all the things you would think that would shut down a broadcast, probably not high on the list. Yeah. We're hoping to. We've had some issues pregame with the clock here at the stadium. So, folks, bear with us. If that does malfunction, it will have to be kept on the sidelines. We're going to try our best with a timer to try to match it up so we can give you an idea of where we're at as this ball game progresses. Raiders take the field first. They will send Ethan Collins and Briar Begler back deep to receive. The Raiders will attack from left to right across your screen here in quarter number one. It's a very frosty night here in Roan County, West Virginia. Just about 35 to 40 degrees at kickoff. And those temperatures expected to dip a little further as the night goes on. The white and red clad Indians of Sisville taking the field. And it looks as if it will be Evan Taylor, a 5'9 sophomore, ready to do the kicking for Sissonville. Raiders want to start fast and start with a lead. That's why they go on offense. They're confident in their abilities. But they will, again, be tested by a very solid team in Sissonville. you got to watch uh, Taylor, pretty good kicker. 
He's got some leg, and he does a really good job of trying to angle kicks, get a good bounce, and try to get the return team off balance before they can ever even get started. Collins and Begler back at their own 10-yard line. We'll sail from right to left off of the right foot of Taylor. Referee's whistle has been blown. Senior night, the final Friday night in high school football in the regular season is underway. It's taken by Delk, the up man, and he is up the field quickly past the 40, past the 45, and out to near midfield. A tremendous starting position for the Raider offense. Yeah, certainly a really good position to put yourself in near the midfield stripe. First possession of the game. Let's see what Roan County comes out. Are we going to go heavy, try to run the ball? Are we going to spread it out, try to pass it a little bit? Keep Sessonville on their toes. Let's see what Coach Burdett draws up. Raiders break the huddle. They'll go with he uh, actually the split back backfield. Collins at the wing position. Collins in motion across the front to the near side. Great house hands it off. That's Delk off tackle. He'll pick up two right out to midfield. And then he'll be shoved back. Boy, Delk last week against Ravenswood, Matt, he ran so hard and was so tired at the end of that game. Yeah, he really earned every yard that he got in that last ball game. Tough yards to get. Delk, though, a gamer. A couple yards here on first down. Brings up second down and a long eight. They'll send Epling to the near side. Double wing formation. Begler across in motion with the sweep. Begler's got Delk in front of him. Great lead block by Delk. There goes Begler. Secondary breaks free down the sideline. One man to beat towards the five, towards the end zone. And big Begler will back into the end zone for a very big 50-yard score. Oh, what a way to start the ball game. Huge blocking down the field. Delk got the seal on the outside. Collins from the receiver spot down the field blocking. What a way for the Roan County Raiders to start this ball game. Huge, huge run for Begler. Boy, Delk and Begler, they played together in the backfield for so many years back into uh, middle school, and they know each other's moves. Delk sealed it. Begler off his rear end to the house. Raiders go for two. Hand off Begler. Off tackle. Untouched into the end zone. The Raiders strike first, and they strike quickly. Less than a minute into the first quarter. It's 7 or eight to nothing, sorry, Roan County on top. 30 second break, we'll be back. What a way to start for the Roan County offense. 50 seconds into the ball game, Boots Blosser. Yeah, Drew, uh, 52 yards on the drive, about 51 seconds off the clock. Begler runs in from 50 yards out, and then he also gets a two-point conversion. Collins will do the kicking from left to right at the 40. Back deep to receive is Dylan Lucas, 5'11", 190 pounder. Is that Lucas or is that number three, Matt? That's three, isn't it? Yeah, Michael Fisher, sorry, and five nine hundred seventy pound junior for Sissonville, eight to nothing. Roan County leading off of the quick score. Collins approaches, leg in, line drive, kick, angled over to the twenty-five, picked up at the twenty-one, straight up the middle goes Sissonville, and they will break free, boy. Just tripping about the 40-yard line was Fisher, or else he had a lot more room to run. So good field position to begin for the Sissonville offense. Raiders are going to be tested here tonight, Matt. Yeah, we. I don't think we'll worry too much about the running game. I think we'll, we'll have plenty in the arsenal to hold Sissonville down in the running game. Only one 100-yard uh, team against this Roan County defense on the entire season but it's the passing attack that you've got to watch out for. And they are spreading it out. Quad receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Empty backfield for Ethan Taylor. The 5'9 sophomore, Taylor, the lefty. He'll keep it up the middle himself, and he will trip as well. 
footing a problem on the first two offensive opportunities for the Indians. A yard on the pickup for Taylor. Yeah, like I said, he's trying to plant and cut back across the grain and just lost the footing there. Jacob Bunner there to tag him down. It is frosty out here tonight, so it's going to be a little slick. Again, Taylor's going to keep it up the middle. Begler comes in from the side, ripping at that football. They'll call forward progress stopped at about the 47-yard line. Brings up a third down and long for the Indian offense. And again, like we said, the Rome County rush defense has been stellar this year. You've really got to watch. you got receivers everywhere for this team. They're going to air it out this time. Taylor looking opposite far side. Four receivers out there, and he will laser beam it to the 10-yard out. And that will be a first down play from Taylor to his intended target over there, Jacob Wiseman, the sophomore. Yeah, this team, it doesn't matter which quarterback comes in. We've got Taylor now. Like we said earlier, Thompson will probably see some snaps at the quarterback as well. So got to watch for you know all different angles from this team. A little bunch of quad receivers to the far side. Now they'll send one of those over to the near side in motion. Taylor, five-step drop, looking for the hitch route. They've got their man and a gain of about three yards on the pass to Brody Thompson, who again, Matt White said, is a part-time QB. Yeah, good receiver as well. Just a good multi-purpose player for, for Sissonville. They like to run a lot of those bubble screens. They like to take the outside receiver, bring him in, and try to get you know, a deep outside post, try to get the safeties to bite up. One of the things you've got to watch if you're one of those free safeties in the back is don't let anything over the top. They'll balance it out now. Two receivers to both sides. They'll go with the run to the big man, uh, Taylor, at it, or sorry, Lucas. And Lucas gobbled up by Christian Jarvis on the outside. He will lose two to three yards. They're going to give him a three-yard loss back to the line of scrimmage. Well, was, Jarvis got a great jump on that, on that ball, able to bring the big back down. Nice play there, Mr. Jarvis. Another third down and long. Here comes a throw. Taylor slings it out there and misses the intended target. Ethan Collins step for step with the receiver, and it'll be a fourth down and long here in Raider territory for the Indians at about the 41-yard line. Yeah, it looks like they're just going to keep the offense out there and see what they can do. Got to watch all the defensive backs. Stay with your man. Don't let anybody get behind you. Balanced. Set for the Indians, two receivers to both sides, and they've got the back. Dylan Lucas in the shotgun with the quarterback, Taylor. Boy, they're taking plenty of time here. The play clock is down near five seconds. They'll get set with four, three. Man in motion across with two, just getting it off. There's a flag that comes in quickly. They'll set the target down on the sideline, and that goes over the head of the intended receiver at about the 25-yard line. A flag came flying in, and I think that's going to be a procedure penalty on Sissonville, so the Raiders obviously, Matt, will decline that. Yeah, I think when you're rushing that play clock down, that's what it's going to be, a legal formation. So somebody moving, not getting set before that play. Uh, not a bad-looking play, just overthrown, but you know, if you don't get everybody in the correct positions what happens on fourth down, so Raiders will take over. Just one first down mustered by the defense or the offense of Sissonville. Eight nothing Roan County. They'll go back on offense here from their own 41 and a half yard line. Left to right, they'll go. Still in quarter number one, and we believe there's eight minutes and 36 seconds on the clock. It was rolling a moment ago, so it yeah, might be working now. Yeah, they might have it back operational. So let's hope because that is uh, getting a bit confusing for. Everybody. Power eye formation for Roan County. We call it heavy. This time heavy to the right. They'll bring Paxton in the backfield as a lead blocker. Second man through. That is Delk. And there goes Delk over midfield. Delk down to the 40. Delk down to the 30. Cuts it back at the 20 and messes with the defender. Sean Conrad was doing a tremendous job blocking all the way down the field for about 15 yards. And Delk strikes big. Yeah, Conrad just got a hand up into the jersey of the, uh, the last man to beat. Got him spun around a little bit. Didn't know where Delk. He thought Delk was cutting back to the inside. He took it down the sideline. Another huge, huge 
run play for Roan County. Boy, Skyler Delk came in just about 70 yards shy of 1,000 yards for his, his season. His buddy Begler already has 1,000 plus, and he nearly got it here on one play. Here's Greathouse, going to roll it, going to dump it into the back of the end zone to his senior buddy, and Lane Epling, a diving catch in the corner of the end zone. It's all working well for the Roan County Raiders, 16 to nothing, and another quick strike. 30-second break, we'll be back. Those are backbreakers early. Gosh, I hope they can keep this up. A highly motivated Roan County team, 16 to nothing. Another quick one, Boots Blosser. Yeah, only one play this time. Took uh, 11 seconds to get down the field. 58 yards. Uh, no, not 58. More than 58. Like 61, <laughs> yep. Yeah, because uh, Delk ran it in from 59 yards out. The two-point conversion from Greathouse to Epling was good, and Delk needs about 10 yards to get to 1,000 now. So close for Skyler Delk. Begler already there. That's impressive, by the way. 2,000-yard rushers on a season. And we're, we're, we're not going to think too far ahead with it. Delk's got to get those yards first, but... If you're looking to break the back of a 2-7 and seven team, early scores and quick scores is a way to do it. 16 to nothing, Roan County quickly on top here. A lot of games still to play. Collins approaches. High, very shallow kick taken by an up man, dropped by that same up man. That's Lucas, the running back, and he has nowhere to go pinballing off of white jerseys before he's dropped by the Raider kick, return, or kick team. Did I get that right? Kick team? The, the kick coverage team. Thank you. Thank That'll you. work. Appreciate look, everybody look like joining uh, us. Albright in there on that tackle. Sorry, Drew. Wow. P appreciate everybody joining us. I'm, I'm, I can barely watch the Facebook live feed, but we got somebody from the state of Washington watching, somebody from North Carolina watching. Appreciate you all joining us here tonight on this final night of the regular season and senior night for the Raiders. First and 10 for the Indian offense. Back in the shotgun is Ethan Taylor. Hands it off up the middle to a quick running back. A flag comes in from the back judge, which is the referee, Cameron Arbogast, in the backfield. And it looks like the Indian's going to be burned for another penalty. This might be a holding. Yeah, usually when it comes from the white hat position, that's what it's going to be, holding on the offense. Just a killer for the offense going backwards to begin for the Indians. So it'll be a first down and 10 from the third, or first down and 20, excuse me, from the 30 yard line of the Indians. 16 to nothing, Roan County. A three play drive on the first one, a two play drive on the second. <coughs> They'll send two receivers over to the far side, one to the near side, shotgun for Ethan Taylor. Hands it off to his speedy running back, looking for running room. Very patient run by Arbogast to pick up five yards. It'll be second down and 15. Yeah, he just kind of snaked his way through the inside of that defense. Colton Paxton right there to take him down for about a five-yard gain. Got South Carolina now watching as well as North Carolina. We've got those Carolinas covered. Second down and 15. We'll call it second and 14, actually. Ball resting at the 35 of the Indians. 16-0, Roan County leading here in the early part of the first quarter. A sophomore Taylor out of the shotgun. He'll roll over to the Sissonville sideline, sets his feet, dumps it deep. It's picked off. Shadrach Greathouse. Oh, did he drop he it? I it. gave him the pick too quick. Mm. I apologize, Shad. That's my bad. My bad, buddy. Uh, it would have been a tough play. But he got his hands on it, but it's cold out there. You know that's got to be. You know, stinging a little bit when a ball hits you. That but Taylor's got an arm on him. I mean, that one was coming in hot. Matt, we've got ourselves a penalty. It'll be a personal foul. Roughing the passer on the Raiders. Someone got there late and drilled Taylor. So an automatic first down given to the Indians. They'll have it first and 10 at midfield. Roan County leading. 
16-0 here in quarter number one. We've gotten away with that one a couple times this year, getting in there late on the quarterback. This time, though, the official's right on the spot. Pair of receivers to this near side, one to the far side. Taylor going to hand it off. Arbogast looking to get going. He'll pick up four. He'll pick up five before Roan County smashes him like a sandwich. Arbogast, the ball carry. Arbogast, just in a couple of runs here, Matt, looks very shifty. Uh, he is. He's very quick back. He's got a ton of speed. You're going to see him uh, right now. He's splitting out to the left side of the formation, so they're going with the power back, Lucas. Second down and five in Raider territory at the 45. Lucas, patient run. He'll pick up three down near the 42-yard line. It'll be a third down and short for the Sissonville offense. Rome County leading 16-0. Yeah. A couple good run plays. That's the, the thing you're going to run into a little bit when you're spreading receivers out everywhere is opening up some running lanes in the middle of the field. That's what they're trying to do. So the linebackers doing a good job so far. You've got to play your, play your gap assignments. Balanced formation, two to either side. They'll give it again to the running back, Lucas, and a very shifty and patient run will move the chains for the second straight time for the Indians. Yeah, Paxton shot through the middle on that one. Had a, just over pursued the angle a little bit. Delk was able to trip up the back. 620. Prevent that one, prevent that one from being a long gain. 620 on a rolling first quarter clock. Raiders have struck twice early and quick. They lead at 16-0, but a drive forming here for the Indians. Motion man to the near side. It will be the quarterback, Taylor, keeping it himself. He'll pick up a yard maybe before he's slung backwards by Paxton and Begler. Both of those guys having themselves a solid game early on defense. That was Paxton's fourth tackle as well as Begler's. How about El Paso, Texas? That is our junior center, Matthew Schaefer's dad, Billy, is out there. Appreciate you joining us. Glad we could bring this to you. Second down and nine for the Roan County or for the Sissonville offense at the Roan County 35. Raiders leading 16-0 here in quarter at number one. Lots of ball still to play. They'll motion a receiver to the near side. That's Wiseman looking to throw over the middle. They'll be launched. It's out there. It's caught. Heading towards the end zone is the receiver. And in for the touchdown is Braden Purdue. Yeah, that's what we talked about. Sissonville has the ability to throw the ball deep. That's pretty good coverage. I mean, step for step with the receiver, but that was just a perfectly thrown ball by Taylor. We mentioned uh, this uh, pregame that the Raiders were going to be tested defensively by the pass, and they have been tested so far. Indians will go for the extra point, and it is up towards the right uh, side, and that will just sneak in the right upright. And Sissonville strikes quickly after Roan Kenny goes up 16 to nothing. 16 7 Raiders. 30 second break. We'll be back. Sixteen to seven now. The Indians with receivers everywhere. They're dangerous with the pass boots, Blosser. Yeah, Drew. Uh, seven plays, two first downs. Um, Sixty-one yards on the drive. Three minutes off the clock. Uh, Thirty-five yard pass from Taylor to Purdue for the touchdown, and the PAT was good. Sixteen seven here in the first quarter. Rome County going to have to get back on their horse offensively. Kicking off once again. Evan Taylor, the sophomore, back deep to receive Briar Begler. And Ethan Collins, they stand at the Raider 10. Taylor went shallow with the first kickoff to Delk. See if he goes deep or if they try some trickery. Again, you are a 2-7 and seven team. There is no reason to hold anything off of the play sheet at this point. Yeah, you're pretty much just going to open up the playbook run as many 
formations and you know just throw everything at this uh, Room County team. And but what they've really got to buckle down though is on the run defense. Here's a squib kick taken by an up man. I believe that Mounts had a knee on the ground. He did, so Hanley Mounts will field it cleanly, and Roan County will start their third possession from their own 35-yard line. No, no reason to change what's working. I mean, the run game, two huge runs, one by Delk, one by Begler to open this game up. 16 to 7 now, Roan County on top about. Five minutes, 15 seconds left here in the first. Shadrach Greathouse, the senior, three-year starter for this Raider offense. Change what's working. Ron Kenny will do split back in the backfield and an immediate penalty coming flying in from the back and the side. And were the Raiders moving? They were. Procedure penalty on Roan County's offense before they run their first play here in possession number three. Back it up to the 30. First and 15 is where the Raiders will start now. You certainly don't want penalties like that. Those are just the mental mistakes on first down. Getting yourself behind the chains, it's already, you know, a first and 15 yards to go. Let's see. Roan County's got in the basket. Double wing formation. It'll be Begler on the sweep. Begler scored from about 50 yards on this play. He is still in space, but he will not get much. He'll get four. That'll be a nice four-yard gain for Begler. He likes to keep plays alive. He and Delk both run so hard. Yeah, both of those guys, leg strength. They've got speed, run with power. Just a, a great tandem to have in the backfield that will be back next year. Yards after contact has been the name of the game. They'll split back in the backfield. Single wing to the far side. Under center goes Great House. He'll fake the give. He'll look to throw to the near side. He'll dump it over on the sideline. Is that caught? If it is, that is insanely good. It is, and that will be a first down catch for Sean Conrad sliding right near the midfield stripe. Uh, doesn't look like they're going to say it hit the ground. Boy, I was wondering if that was going to be called a catch. That was a great effort, though. Greathouse delivered that on the run, about the only place he could to get it to Conrad, and Conrad nearly made a tremendous catch. Yeah, that's probably as good of a throw as we've seen Shadrach make all year. I mean, he was in the perfect spot, just uh, not able to come up with it. Third down and long. Begler across in motion. He'll come set. Two wings on the near side now. And a whistle, and Roan County will burn their first timeout of the ball game. 4.29 left in the first quarter. Timeout, Roan County. They lead at 16-7. to We'll be back. Not sure about the state ratings for Delkin Begler as far as running is concerned. I'm not sure. Wish I could answer that one off the top of my head. Out of the Roan County timeout, four minutes, 29 seconds remaining in the first quarter. The Raiders' first two possessions were three and two plays, respectively. They struck first and second and quickly, but the Indians come back with a nice seven-play drive all through the air, really, even though they ran the ball a couple times, didn't get a whole lot. But I'm telling you, this is a dangerous passing team in the Indians. So now Roan County... After going backwards with a penalty to begin this drive, they've got it third and 11. The ball spotted at the Roan County 34-yard line. Yeah, Roan County has not seen a predominantly passing team much this season, so you know the backs are going to have to you know, be very aware. It'll be three in the backfield for the Raider offense. They'll fake the give to Begler. They're going to go deep. They've got Conrad, but he slipped at the midfield stripe, Matt. Couldn't get his footing back as uh, Greathouse was delivering that pass. You could see Conrad lose his footing for just a second, and the timing was completely off on that one. The Raiders stopped for the first time tonight and will have to give it away to the Indians. Yeah, you got to give Sissonville a lot of credit for buckling down on that defensive series, forcing Rome County. They're going to have to come out here and punt. Greathouse will go back to punt for Rome County. 
He stands at the Roan County 20-yard line. It will be Wiseman, or no, not sorry, it'll be Purdue standing at the 35. Great house, leg into it, and he destroys it. High into the night sky, takes a big Raider bounce. What a punt for Shadrach Greathouse. Purdue, when he saw that go off the foot of uh, Greathouse, just started walking to the Sissonville sideline, said there's no way I'm even going after that one. A great punt, flipping the field. Yeah, I did a really good job. A lot of pressure up the middle. You know, fortunately, got that one off, but a big, high punt. You know, one gets up there in the in the sky that much, it's really difficult for the uh, punt returner to make a play on it. And like you said, Purdue just said to heck with it and just let it roll. So we'll see if the Raider defense, specifically the defensive backs of Roan County, can tolerate this offensive uh, firepower through the air for the Indians. 16-7, to Roan County leading. 413 left here in quarter number one on senior night. Four receivers out to the far side, single to the near side. Empty backfield for Ethan Taylor, the left-handed quarterback. They'll motion Arbogast back into the backfield. Here comes the snap, the give to Arbogast, looking for running room to the outside, breaks a tackle at the 25, and fights out to near the 31-yard line. That is a rarity this year, Matt. Missed tackle for Rome County. Yeah, unfortunate on that one. You know, got an arm on Arbogast, just couldn't bring him down. That was Conrad having to come in and clean that one up at the end. It's not what you want to see, guys, in your secondary having to make tackles that far down the field. Give him 10. They'll move the chains out to the 31. Going quickly. Taylor wants the throw. Releases downfield. Ooh. Conrad jumped the route. And he is one of the tops in the state of West Virginia in interceptions with five. He nearly had six. Yeah, he's looking at trying to find the hole in his hands that made him miss that one. He really had a beat on that ball, made a great break on it. Oh, if he's able to haul that one in, that'd been a huge turn for Rome County. 16 to 7, Rome County leading here with 352 remaining in the first quarter. Indians sticking with no huddle. Three receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Here's the, the handoff. That's Arbogast again. Got to get a hand on that young man. Raiders do. Very nice open field tackle by Begler. Uh, Begler just been solid all year. Really good heat-seeking missile of a linebacker. Can't wait to have that guy back next year again. There's a big third down for the Roan County defense. They need to hold quickly, get this ball right back from the Indian offense. Indians have a little momentum coming off of that touchdown drive on their third possession. A touchdown drive, a big defensive stand, looking to capitalize. Here comes the pass. Taylor looking to the far side. He'll be flushed out of the pocket. There is the hold Roan County needed. And a great defensive play. Nevertheless, in the backfield, or the defensive backfield, Shad comes over and swats it away from the intended target, Purdue. That was a great pass by Taylor, and that allows Rome County, if they want to, decline this penalty. Yeah, we'll see here. That was pretty deep in the backfield where that holder, maybe a block in the back, one or the other. But, yeah, what a play by Shad, step for step. Raiders will decline the penalty, Matt, so it'll be fourth down and ten. If you're the Indians, what do you do here at two and seven? They're going to go for it, man. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's hope it doesn't work out for them. Fourth and 10 from the 32 of the Indians. They'll balance it out with two receivers to both sides of the formation. Taylor in the backfield. Giving a look to the Sissonville sideline. They'll reset. Lucas to the right, and there's going to be a quick pooch punt for the Indians. And Rome County wasn't fooled on the hard count to begin with, and so it'll just be Taylor with the quick kick. Not a very good quick kick. Roan County's going to have great field position here at the 45 of the Raiders for their fourth offensive possession in the first quarter. 16-7 to seven is what happens when you score on five plays total. Yeah, when you get quick scores by both teams, I mean, that's going to flip the field quickly and, you know, We've had several games here recently that were possessions were uh, even more at a premium. That may not be the case here. This could be a this could be a barn burner. It was a very long first quarter. First and ten, Roan County at their own 45, leading 16-7. Heavy package to the right. Third man is D uh, Begler. Begler straight up the middle, 
Following the two lead blockers, nice hole produced by those blockers. Roan County with five out to midfield. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of, uh, a lot of bodies in the middle of that for Sissonville, but what a great job just to stay ahead of the chains. Get five yards on first down. We'll take that every time. Again, Begler went over 1,000 yards rushing on the season last week. Delk is ever so close. Heavy package to the left. Three in the backfield for Rome County. Second man through. That is Delk. He'll fight forward for four yards inside the 47 to the 46 now of the Indians. Clock will roll 210 and counting. First quarter. On senior night, Roan County struck quickly twice. They lead 16 to seven. Third down and one for the Raider offense. Now certainly anytime you can come up third and short, it gives your offense a big advantage. Quick handoff, that's Begler. He's got lots of room to the outside. He'll cut it back. Here he goes again inside the 30, down to the 25 and out of bounds at about the 23, 22 yard line. Begler has ripped off a couple of big ones here in the first quarter for the Roan County offense. Yeah, just continuing to add to his season totals. That was uh, the other Taylor, Evan, able to corral Begler before he's able to break that one, take it to the house. That would have been another uh, big play. For first, Roan County. first and 10 Raiders at the 22 of the Indians. Far side hash, they'll stick with heavy package. Third man, that's Begler. Off tackle, he'll fight forward inside the 20, down to about the 18, give him four on the first down carry. This is what we've seen more often this year, Matt, is those four to five yard chunk plays to move the chains and stay in front. Yeah, you, you certainly can't put yourself in a hole early in the uh, early in the possession. You want to get those you know, second and six, then work your way down into third and short and just keep churning up yards. Heavy package yet again, this time Delk, there he goes, into the secondary, inside the 15, down to about the 10. And Delk is right near that 1,000 uh, that yards. That one is going to put him over the, the, the 1K mark. Wow, congratulations to Delk and Begler, 2,000-yard rushers in the same season. And Matt White mentioned it, they're both back. The Can't first wait. and 10, just outside the 10-yard line of the Indians, 16-7 to Rome County. Hard count for Great House. The Indians don't jump, so he'll reset. Sticking heavy. It'll be third man. That's Begler. Look at him out to the outside. Cuts it back again. Look at the lead blocking of wow. Sean Conrad again. That young man is killing it downfield. Yeah, that whole left side of the offensive line just opened up a, a, a freight train size hole for Begler to run through with plenty of speed to spare. No doubt about that one. Heading to the house. Raiders pulling away now 22-7 to seven here toward the end of the first quarter. Roan County will go for two. They'll stick with the heavy package. It's worked this entire drive. Begler now comes out of the backfield in motion to the far side. Give off tackle Delk, and he is into the end zone before you can breathe. Roan County hits it right back after giving up the score. They lead 24-7, to seven, and we're still in quarter number one. 30-second timeout. We'll be back. Rome County leading 24 to seven. That was a sustained drive boots and that was all heavy package. Yeah, it was uh, six plays, two first downs, all runs, uh, 55 yards on the drive, a uh, snail's pace of two minutes and 25 seconds off the clock. <laughs> um, Begler runs it in from 10 yards out and Delk uh, gets the two point conversion. And on that drive, Skyler Delk joins his backfield mate Briar Begler going over the century mark. Both young men 
Over 1,000 for the season. 24 to seven, Roan County leading Sissonville here on senior night. Yeah, you see what happens as you're establishing the run early in the possession, keeping ahead of the chains, just, you know, like you say, just churning up yardage and, you know, keep the sticks moving. Eventually, you're going to wear down this team. Fisher back deep to receive. Ethan Collins set to kick. Approaches, hits into it at the 40. This is high and shallow, taken by an up man at, at the 30. Looking for running room, and that'll be a big return for that young man. I can't see the jersey number yet. Mm, It'll pop up late. That's Purdue, number eight. Last off the pile, and that's about a 20-yard return. Give him 19 on the kick return, so half the field with which to work for the Sissonville Indian offense. And, again, this is one of those teams that uh, – you're just waiting until the fourth quarter with all zeros on the clock because these guys are dangerous. Yeah, they really can. They can, they can strike quickly. They can, they can put up some points. And like you said, they've just had a, a buzzsaw of a schedule this year, having to take on the likes of Hoover and Polka and you know all the other top teams in the in that Cardinal. Overload to the near side. They'll send Purdue in motion. They'll hand it off to Arbogast. He is into the secondary very quickly. That's a 11-yard gain into Raider territory at the 40-yard line. Arbogast, boy, this guy is a speedster. He really is. He's quick as a hiccup up the middle for big yardage. Good job there by Lane Epling in the secondary. Nice open field tackle to prevent an even bigger run. Coach Burdett mentioned it. He said, you've got a lot of moving parts on this offense you're going to have to deal with. First and 10 at Rome County's 40. Be the final play if it's not a pass of the first quarter. It will be a pass, though. Taylor, little slip screen over to the near side. That's caught by the receiver. And that will be a nine-yard pickup from Taylor to Wiseman. And that will be the final play of the first quarter. Good first quarter, though, for Rome County on senior night. They lead it 24-7 to after one. We'll be back with this 60-second timeout. We welcome you back to County Stadium on senior night. Roan County uh, up 24 to 7. A 40-minute first quarter, by the way. That's how long that one took. Sissonville on the drive. They've moved the ball in a couple of their drives pretty effectively. They've got it to Roan County's 31 on a second and one. Taylor's going to keep it up the middle. He'll have the first down on a four-yard carry for the Indian offense, and they're moving the sticks here. We talked early about trying to get some points or some uh, help. Not going to have it. Nicholas County up 33, North Marion up 34, Robert C. Bird up 42. None of those are even at the half. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yikes. Didn't think that those would uh, fall, and they are holding serve. Raiders just need to do what they can do here. Shotgun for Taylor. He'll look to throw it to the far side. He'll dump it out to Arbogast. He's quick. He'll get past Begler. He'll spin at the 12-yard line. He'll be lit up there, but not before. Another first down play for the Sissonville offense. Yeah, they have plenty of explosive weapons on this Indians team. You know, it's still 24 to 7. I mean, that sounds great, but, you know, you can't rest on your laurels right now because they can really put up points in a hurry. Shotgun snap to Taylor. He'll dump it out to Arbogast again. That one just missing the target. 
One uh, little bit of surprise right now, though. Wayne, 20 to 7 on Polka. Wow. Didn't expect that one. I wonder if Polka's resting their starters. No. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Second down and 10 at the Roan County 12. The defense on their heels a bit. 24 7, Roan County leading. 11.30 on a stopped second quarter clock. Motion man to the near side is Wiseman. Taylor going to hand off to Arbogast, and that young man is dangerous. My goodness, another chunked up eight-yard run for the 155-pound junior Cameron Arbogast. Yeah, we said they had a little bit of a thunder and lightning on their team with Arbogast, the speedster. Lucas, he's more of a power back. Like I said, they can put up, chunk up some yards in a hurry as well. Call it third down and a very short three. The ball resting just outside of Roan County's five-yard line. Taking plenty of time here, the Indians. 10.45 and rolling. Shotgun for Taylor. Motion man to the near side. Taylor's going to hand it off to Arbogast. He's got the first down. He won't get to the end zone, but he'll be just a yard shy of the goal line and the Indians boy they have shown the ability to move the football on a couple of drives here can the Raiders hold them out first and goal from the one going to be difficult with Arbogast back there right now uh, he's just having his way with the Roan County defense at this moment he'll be right beside the quarterback Taylor and they're going to give it to him again he's right near the goal line and he is in that offensive series care of Cameron Arbogast for the Indians, and that gets them back to within 11, 24 to 13. Yeah, just challenging the defensive front of Roan County. You know, we've talked about how well they've done in run defense this year. Not so much on that drive. Let's see if they can buckle down next possession. The quarterback, Taylor, will be the kicker. Snap is back, Taylor, the leg into it, and that is good. So with 10.37 left in the second quarter, Roan County gives up another score, but they lead it by 10, 24, 14, 30-second break. We'll be back. Grafton's up on Lewis County, too. Kind of figured. We welcome you back to County Stadium. 10.37 left in the second quarter. Lots of scoring going on here, Boots Blosser. Uh, yeah, a little too much for my comfort. Uh, eight plays, 51 yards, a minute 58 off the clock. Arbor gas from uh, three yards out, or from one yard out, and uh, Taylor's PAT was good. So the Indians crawl back to within 10, 24 to 14. The Raiders just need to continue to hold serve here and keep the Indians at bay, or at least at arm's length would be nice. <clears throat> Kicking off once again will be Evan Taylor, the sophomore. Begler, Collins stand at the 12. Scott in a tough one with Nitro, only up eight to six at the halftime. It'd be nice for Roan County if when we're tied with at number nine would happen to fall. Nitro, the team that defeated this Sissonville team handily last Friday night. 24-14 Roan County, still a lot of time to be played in the first half, 10-20. Taylor. This is going to be a squibber again. That's going to be Mounts at the 40. He'll take it near side out to the 45. And he, he was expecting and wanting some contact there. He put two hands over the ball and just put his shoulders down and ran out near midfield. In fact, he will be across midfield. So the Raiders will have less than half the field with which to work here. Yeah, I like that. Every guy that's a up man on that kick return. They always want to get their hands on the ball and try to show that they deserve to be running that thing. And Mounts did a smart thing. I like the initiative, the, the toughness of handling Mounts. He really, uh, he's not afraid to get, uh, get in there and get dirty with it. 
just a junior for this Roan County team. First and 10, Roan County inside the midfield stripe. It'll be Colton Paxton this time on a quick dive play. That'll be a nice four-yard gain for the normal tight end. Yeah, a good hard run. Give the guy a little bit of love that's been blocking the way for Delk and Begler this year. Paxton getting us, uh, getting us out ahead of the sticks a little bit. And I like that play call because now if you're Sissonville, you throw him in the backfield, he's not just a lead blocker. You have to recognize him now. Heavy package for the Raiders. Second down and six at the 45 of the Indians. Back to the heavy and back to the chunking of yardage for Begler. He'll pick up big yardage, give him 10, give him 11. And boy, what we said coming in was the front five, the O-line of the Raiders have been dominant all season and the lead blockers just continue to help out. That's why Roan County is uh, churning up 2,000 yard rushers. Oh, yeah, just uh, it's been a wonderful season for both of these guys. You know, they don't want it to end. They know it's not going to end here tonight. Uh, pretty much a guaranteed shot that Roan County is going back to the playoffs no matter what. It's just a matter of who and where. First and 10 Raiders at the 35. Begler again off tackle. A little bit of jitterbugging before he puts his foot down to the metal. And he will pick up another big yard gain inside the 30 down to the the 27, I believe. Yep, 27. Give Begler seven on the first down carry. 24-14. Raiders leading by 10, 9-20, and rolling here in the first half. Heavy package to the right. Great house under center. Second man through is Delk. Delk's picking up big yardage. Delk's got the first. Delk inside the 20. And the Raiders just uh, very patient offensively in the last two sets. They've worked nothing but heavy package in the last touchdown drive and so far on the first 30 yards of this one. Yeah, I like it. Just keep pounding it up the middle against this defense. Wear them down and maybe look for a quick hitter to the outside when you're not looking. Great house goes under center. Third man. Nope, that's Great house keeping it. And again, I like the way that every once in a while, Coach Burdett and the staff filtering in, well, you got to now work, worry about Colton Paxton. Well, now you got to worry about Great House with the run. Yeah, I think it's been very underrated with Shadrach's ability to run the ball this year. He does a great job moving around in the pocket. He's got enough speed that he can get outside. Plenty of toughness. He's not afraid to stick his nose in the middle of the defense. So, yeah, good to see him. Keeping the defense honest. Give him three on the first down carry. Second and seven from the 17 of the Indians. Back to heavy, back to the third man, Begler. And look at him fight forward inside the 15 down to the 12. Raiders will have third down and short. 9.20 and rolling here in the second quarter. Raiders leading 24 to 14. Yeah, if they're not going to be able to shake the Indians, Matt, they just got to keep on scoring. Yeah, well, the thing about that play, first contact was at the 15-yard line. In, in just the middle of a, of a solid defense. And Begler, one of the smaller guys, able to just push forward and pick up an extra three yards, setting up a third and short. Raiders break the huddle with eight on the play clock. Third down and a long one. They've got to get inside the 10. Heavy package. That's going to be Delk. He'll fight towards the first down line. He'll be short, though. So the Raiders will face a fourth down and about a yard, maybe a little less than a yard. You would hate to see a drive stall just outside the 10, so you got to pick this one up. Quickly to the line goes Roan County. Heavy package to the left. Great house gives it Begler. He's got the first down and more, and Begler still fighting. He popped out of there at the last second. I thought he was going down at the five. He said, nope, I'm in, baby. I'm going in. Uh, just great balance, great vision by Begler to find his way into the end zone. But Roan County up now 30 to 14 with the PAT pending. This first half may end at 10 o'clock with all the scoring that's going on. Roan County will go for two. Three in the backfield once again. It's going to be a fake on the give. Great House going to go deep into the back of the end zone, and that one off the tip of the hands 
of, I believe, Conrad. So the two-point conversion, no good. Roan County leading, though, 30 to 14. 30-second break. We'll be back. I'll call you back. All right, all right. <clears throat> Six minutes, 31 seconds remaining in the first half. The Raiders keeping pace. They got out to the first two scores, and that's where they have been uh, since then, Boots. Yeah, eight plays, two first downs. 49 yards on the drive, three minutes, 45 seconds off the clock. Begler runs in a fourth, uh, fourth down touch, yeah, fourth down touchdown from 10 yards out, and the two-point conversion from Greathouse and Conrad was no good. The only problem with that two-point conversion not being good is it's 16 points, which means officially it's a two-possession lead. They put that in, it's 18, and you're guaranteed a three-possession advantage. There was a penalty, apparently, on that uh, two-point conversion play. Roan Kenny will be kicking from the 45 now instead of the 40. Yeah, I didn't see what that was. <laughs> Maybe no one else did. Maybe it wasn't a penalty. Maybe they're just trying to sneak it up a little bit and officials trying to sort this one out. <laughs> and uh, also on that last drive, Bagler went over 100 yards. On the night. He's up to 130 with three touchdowns. Okay, so that was interesting. <laughs> Collins just said, I'm going to tee it up from the 45 this time. And he almost got away with it. He, he was he was on did. his approach when the sideline official noticed it. So. so I guess there was not a penalty. I didn't see one. So back to the 40 goes Collins. Sneaky move there, senior. He'll approach, leg in. He drills this one. That's over the head of the return man, Fisher, back down to the seven-yard line is where he will pick it up, and he is running for his life. Oh, no, there he goes. He's loose over the 50. Delk chasing. Can Delk get to him? Delk will, but he's going to get whistled for a horse collar tackle. Oh, my goodness. Mm. What was almost a beautiful play for the Raiders turned out to be miserable. Yeah, that's one of those cases of, you know, out kicking your coverage. I mean, just guys uh, got such a good bead early. Just allowed Fisher to squirt up the middle and down the sideline and tack on half the distance after the horse collar penalty. But good hustle by Delk to just save the touchdown. Boy, the Raiders were unable to break down on that mm. play, and they got burnt badly. Give Delk a ton of credit. He had to hustle just to keep Sissonville from striking immediately. The Raider defense, though, in trouble right off the bat. 6-18 left in the half, first and goal already for the Indians. Man, the way games can turn on a dime. Taylor in the shotgun, sends Purdue across to the far side in motion. The give, Arbogast, he's been untouchable, and he's into the end zone. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, just like that, Sissonville strikes back. Yeah, like we said, we thought this one might be a pretty high-scoring game. But certainly shaping up that way. Now 30-20, to 20, Sissonville closes the gap. Looks like they will go for the kick attempt. They'll be careful. I'm sure they've done the numbers. They've added, hopefully correctly over there. Taylor will be the kicker. That's the scary part about it. Whistle flags come flying in from the sideline. Roan County just can't get out of their own way right now. They're going to be whistled for offsides. That'll be half the distance to the goal. That will offer the Indians a, an opportunity to go for it here, and they're going to. Man. Mm. Roan County. Let's get back to focused here. Yeah, really just, uh, like I said, that was a mental lapse. You know, you come down, the, flying down the field, you're trying to make a big play. You've got to slow yourself down just a little bit sooner. Going to try to make it a one-possession ball game and heading towards the goal line, but he won't get in there. I don't know who that is. 
They went to a wildcat formation for Purdue. He didn't make it. So that was big for the Raider defense. A little sigh of relief as they keep it a two-possession ball game, but it's down to 10, 30 to 20. 30-second break. We'll be back. Well, off the kickoff for Roan County, it looked like it might be a great defensive opportunity. Instead, it turns into a first and goal from the five on the first play uh, from scrimmage for the Indians. They ended up putting it in, Boots Blosser. Yeah, one play, uh, five yards, 24 seconds off the clock. Arbogast runs it in from five yards out, and Braden Purdue's two-point conversion was no good. We said that the Raiders were going to be tested they were their own worst enemy on that last play. They had Fisher at the six-yard line. They were closing in. They didn't break down, and they didn't make a tackle, and that ended up with the big play. Big stop, though, on the two-point conversion. Keeps it a two-possession ball game. Rome County leading 30-20. to 20. Taylor set to kick. He has done it three separate ways already. You just don't know what to expect. He'll approach, and here comes the kick over to the far side this time. That's picked up quickly by Conrad. He'll just take it out to about the 45-yard line and says, hey, that's good field position for us. Yeah, I know you used to take a risk on that one of losing the ball. Just get what you can get, get out of bounds, set your offense up. Been doing a great job. Offensive line has really been paving the way for this Roan County Raider team throughout this game, rushing yards. 30 to 20, Roan County leading 6-11 left. This is a long first half. Yeah, it really is still just halfway through the second quarter. Now 50 points put on the board so far between the two teams. Three in the backfield for the Raiders. They'll stick heavy, and they're going to give it off tackle on the fullback dive. And Paxton picks up big yardage on first down. I'll give him five. That was Fisher. After that big return coming from the defensive end. And, oh, they're going to give him, that's a that's a heavy five. Five yards on the carry, out to the 48 for Roan County. They'll go back to traditional heavy. That's Begler. Jump cut right off the bat. He'll pick up the Raider first down. They'll move the chains inside the Indians' territory. 540 on a temporarily stopped clock. As soon as they set the chains, the clock will roll. 30 to 20, Roan County leading by 10. Well, you just got to keep them, again, at arm's length. Yeah, you've built up an early lead. You just got to maintain it. Keep capitalizing on all the opportunities that you've got. Your offensive line is doing a really good job. Just you know, keep chunking up yards and put another one in the end zone. Extend and hopefully the Raider hopefully. defense can figure something out here. Back to three in the backfield. Again, Begler off tackle. We got a whistle. We're going to get ourselves a penalty. Raiders are going to move backwards here. Right the They're going to get Roan County, I believe, on a hold. They yep. will. Mm, not what you want on first down. you got to try to get ahead of the sticks. You don't want to set yourself up. Now you've got a, probably a first and about 20 so yards. Ball, yep, 19 yards. So a very tough... Tough thing for the Raiders. They're going to be behind the sticks here on a first down and nearly 20 back in their own territory at the 45-yard line. The last time we saw ourselves get a penalty like that on the first down, we ended up having to punt it away. So let's hope if the uh, offense can pick up a good chunk here and try to get this one back to manageable. And that was the one time Roan County did not score was when they went backwards on a first down play, Raiders go to the traditional I formation, and now we got whistles. Did Roan County jump again? Gosh, they did. Mm. Ball started to call against the Raiders. Raiders. Well, I tell you, the, 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 
the model of efficiency on the first two drives and um, the last couple of plays both uh, defensively and offensively have not been the prettiest for the Raiders. So they're, they're going to go back even further. The yard to reach is the Sissonville 36. Actually 35. Roan County is at their own 40. First down and 24 yards to go. They'll go spread formation. Ace. And Greathouse is going to keep it. Greathouse shoots out of there like a cannon, breaks a tackle over midfield, over the 40. He's going to get it all back in this some on one play. Wow. Just when you think it's getting worse and worse, well, you we spread talked, them all out and you send Greathouse. Well, we talked about it earlier how underrated Shadrach is with his legs and just showed the wheels. Showed the nice shifty moves. Good job picking up that first down. Rome County really needed that one. Couldn't afford to uh, not pick up a big play on that. First and 10 at the 34 of the Indians. They'll stick with the ace formation, balanced formation. Two receivers to both sides. Begler, the lone back in the backfield. Raiders got to hurry. There's two on the shot on the clock. One, he'll get it off with one second. Greathouse wants to throw. Now he's flushed out of the pocket mm. and he's tripped. And he will lose four yards, falling to the ground. One of the up men just grabbed a hold of the shoelace. Just barely getting a hold of that one was Patton up the middle. If not, you know, Great House is going to probably pick up some pretty, uh, pretty positive yards on that one. So once again, the Raiders will go backwards on a first down play, second down and 14 from the 39 of the Indians. 4-15 and rolling first half. Raiders lead 30-20. to 20. They'll stay with the ace formation. They'll hand it off. That's Begler. He's in a pile of a bunch of people. He's only going to get a yard, and it's going to bring up third down and 13. Yeah, the ball, Just nowhere to go up the middle. Sissonville defense not fooled. Did a great job to read the gap assignment. And let's see what Roan County dials up. Do we... Try a, maybe a pass out of this one, or you know, do you just continue trying to pound the ball at the middle? They'll spread it out. They'll send trip receivers to the near side. That's the short side of the field. Lane Epling to the far side. Great house now going to call Collins across to the far side in motion. Snap back, rolls near side, does Great House. He's going to look to run. He'll plant it at the 30. He cuts back, and another one for Great House. Shadrach picks up another big first down on the run. Yeah, just, the receivers just kind of ran all of the defenders away from that play. Uh, opened, the, opened it up very well on that left sideline for Shadrach. Pick up another huge first down. So big plays by the senior quarterback, Shad Greathouse, 320 and rolling. Raiders back on the move here. First and 10 from the 23. Give Delk. Delk fighting forward and doing what he does best. Just two hands on the ball and fighting. Give him eight on the carry. And just we talk about how hard those guys run and the yards after contact. He takes initial contact just one or two yards, drags a guy for an additional five. That just shows weight room. Second down and two inside the 15 of the Sissonville Indians. Heavy package to the left. Shad under center, second man through his Delk. He'll fight forward, continuing to battle before he is stacked up. Give him about a yard, brings up third, and a yard on the play. Two minutes, 30 seconds and counting here in the second quarter. It was Ian Morelli in on the tackle. Raiders lead 30 to 20, trying to churn up this clock and put one in at the end of the half. They'll, get, they'll need a third down conversion here, and they've got it, and they've got more. There goes Begler, breaking a tackle at the 13, inside the 10, first and goal, Roan County at the 8. That was Hunter Burdett with the tackle. That's our good friend John Penna, his... Old work buddy from the Shoney's Warehouse days, Damon, <laughs> it's his son, a senior this year for the Sissonville Indians. First and goal, Rome County at the Sissonville 8, 30 to 20, under two minutes remaining in the half. Sissonville will have possession to begin the second half. 
Great house under center, snap back. Second man through is Delk. He'll jump over the initial pile inside the five to the four. Give him four yards on the first down carry. And a timeout whistle by Sissonville. We'll take it with him. 142 left in the half, 30 to 20. Second and goal from the four after this 30 second timeout. Call you back. With two big plays on this drive so far, both with the feet of the senior quarterback, Shadrach Greathouse. Had to get a first down on a third down and 24. Got it. Had to get a first down on a third and 13. Got it. Yeah, just uh, big big game plays by Greathouse. You know, he's not had to run the ball a whole lot this year, but he's very capable. And I think that's really – uh, you know, a great thing to have in your arsenal because you're keeping the defense honest. You know, they're selling out on, on Begler. They're selling out on Delk. We've given the ball to Paxton. He's not seen a lot of touches this year, and they're getting yardage. So you've got to account for everybody on this Roan County offense. It will be second and goal from the Sissonville four-yard line with Roan County leading 30-20 to 20 and just 142 remaining in the first half. Raiders will take the field. He'll put him into the traditional I formation. Snap back, give Begler up the middle, looking for the running room right towards the goal line. Boy, I tell you, the near side judge was leaned in, staring down that football, trying to find out if Begler was going to get it in. He did not, but that will force the hand of the Indians. They'll have to call their second timeout. They want to keep some clock because they're confident in the ability to move the football. With 1.32 left on the clock, Roan County will have a third and goal now from the one-yard line. The Indians, Matt, are playing some strategy here, and they are going to try to give themselves some time with which to work. So the best you can do is at least eliminate the timeouts they have. Oh, absolutely, Drew. I mean, you know, Roan County wants to punch this one in as quickly as possible. It'll be third down as soon as we come back from the timeout. So... You know, if you don't get it here, you obviously you've got another shot to try to punch it in. If they, you know, Sissonville uses up all of their timeouts, does get the ball back, you know, they're pretty much, you know, they're just going to start chunking it down the field, hope something happens. And, you know, you've got plenty of time. And, you know, you, if you pick up first downs, you you, know, you get the timeout while they reset the chains. So, you know, they've shown to not even go in a huddle. They stay, uh, you know, up on the line. They get the calls in quickly plenty of potential for them to uh, get back in this ball game. But first things first, Roan County really needs to punch this one in. Third and goal from the Sissonville one for the Roan County offense. Leading 30 to 20. Raiders will go traditional line. Nope, they're going to go split back in the backfield. Snap is back. Here's the give, and there goes Beggs again, <coughs> diving into the end zone. Was that Delk? My bad. Delk diving in. I saw Begler diving. He was diving <laughs> to try to block somebody for his buddy. Oh, maybe he was trying to make a cushion for Delk to land on because they were both <laughs> about three yards into the end zone at the end of that play. And once again, this is a big two-point conversion. You'd love to be up three official scores instead of two. Right now it's a 16-point lead, 36-20. to 20. Can the Raiders find the hole in the defense? They'll go traditional I formation. Great house under center. Here's the pitch to the outside to Begler for the first time tonight, and the Indians were all in on the off-tackle run. They had 11 in the box, Matt, and that was a great call for Rome County. Yeah, just they were selling up the middle, not worried about the, uh, the little Tulsa to the left for – Begler, oh, just uh, like you said, you, you wanted to have that cushion to where you know it's at least you know a three possession game before Sissonville can come back on this one. Yeah, and here's the thing, Matt. You're up 38 to 20. The Indians have a minute 29 with which to work here, and they get the ball to start the second half. And the Raiders, I'll tell you what, defensively, the last uh, well, the last series was first and goal. 
to start the series. But uh, previous to that, the Indians have been able to find uh, a very good rhythm offensively with the pass first, and now it has opened up the opportunities for Arbogast, and he's been chunking up big yardage with the run, just as Roan County has been doing. Yeah, I mean, Sissonville showed they have a lot of weapons on this team. And, you know, if you, you know, special teams really needs to uh, clean things up, make sure you break, break down on your tackles. Don't let anybody get past you and score a big one. Yeah, don't offer the opportunity for two scores, you know. Don't give up one here late in the half and then give them an opportunity with the second half kickoff. First, you got to kick it away. It'll be Fisher back deep. He burnt the Raiders on a 90-yard return the last time. High, shallow kick. That'll be taken by an up man, I believe. That's Wiseman, and he'll pick up a good chunk of yardage on the return out to nearly the 46-yard line, so it won't be much of the field, half the field basically, for this offense of the Indians to work. Yeah, it's good field position, plenty of time, about a minute and 23 left here in the second quarter. Raiders, Raiders they really just need to buckle down here on defense. They have been unable to get anywhere near Ethan Taylor. Now he's been delivering uh, quick passes. They'll go back to the quad receiver set to the far side. Ron Kenny would love to get a little bit of pressure on Taylor. Minute 23 left in the half. Roan Kenny leading 38 to 20. The snap is back. Three-step drop. No pressure at all. He'll dump it out to the near side. Good coverage by Conrad. And the throw goes errant, intended for Wiseman. Yeah, just good coverage across the board. Roan County content to only rush three in hopes that the big guys up front can maybe sneak through the offensive line. Going to play for you know a little bit more of a zone coverage on the inside man on the outside and maybe you try to get a guy coming across the middle and uh, your uh, zone guys can maybe pick one here off. comes another pass and that's a uh, slip screen opportunity and speaking of slipping that <laughs> brody thompson unable to keep there. his footing yes you're welcome i see what you did there. i like it i'll accept it so two quick plays brings up a third down and 10 <clears throat> and now if you're roan county you're thinking we bet we really want to get this stop here because you might have some time Third and 10 from the 46-yard line. Taylor out of the shotgun, looking to the far side. He's going to go deep on the chair route. He's got his man. That's Arbogast. Did he make the grab? Holy cow, he did. How in the world did he catch that one? What a play. Yeah, he just had to jump and contort and bring that one in. It's a good thing it was underthrown a little bit or uh, Arbogast is off to the races. That was a... Good play. 109 with which to work. The Raider defense calls a timeout after the big third down conversion for the Indian offense. It's a very tense moment. 30-second break. We'll be back. One oh nine remaining in the first half. Roan County leading 38-20, to 20, but showing zero signs of being able to stop this Sissonville passing attack right now. And you do not want to give up a touchdown and then give the ball to this Sissonville team because that three-possession lead can evaporate. Yeah, I got to – watching the secondary, you can't let anybody get behind you. They like to run those wheel routes. You saw that a lot in film. Taylor will have Lucas to his left in the shotgun. Three-step drop. He'll dump it out to the far side, and that is great defense. Is that uh, Conrad again? This guy, I'm telling you what, if people around the state don't uh, recognize him yet, they should because he is having an all-state season. Yeah, he really is. He played, you know, that we talk about how difficult it is to play the corner position. It's 
you're out there on an island. You know, that time he didn't get his head around, but he read the receiver and uh, was able to get a hand up and interfere with that pass. Great, Sec great play. Second down and 10 from the Roan County 30-yard line. Arbogast comes to the near side in motion. Taylor will roll to the far side. Got plenty of time to throw it. Out there is Greathouse. Did he make the grab in fair territory for the pick? Waiting, waiting. It looks like it. It is. It is a pick for Shadrach Greathouse on senior night. That's the way to end the drive. Greathouse nearly had an interception, Matt, early in the game. It went through his hands. That one was a huge play. Yeah, just a... Uh... Basically, he was the receiver on that one, trying to tiptoe the sidelines. Great concentration to bring that catch in, get a foot down. Oh, fantastic play. Raiders really needed that one to keep the momentum as we're going into the half. First and 10 Raiders, Sissonville not set. Roan County's going to get this playoff quickly. They're going to dump it out to Begler on the pitch. Room. Begler has one man to beat. He's got a great block. Here goes Begler. Oh, my gosh, he fumbled the football. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Begler was off to the races. Nobody to get to him. Delk had a great lead block. He was heading to the house, Matt, and it just goes out of his hands. I'm not sure <laughs> if he was trying to, to switch hands, uh, get it to that outside arm. Fortunate for Roan County that that thing trickles out of bounds to give yourself another shot. But my gosh, what a what a just a mental lapse for that poor guy. He could that that could have been a 90-yard touchdown. <laughs> but it's, it's, hey, it's still a great run. Raiders caught Sissonville not in position. First and ten, just shy of midfield at the 46 of Roan County. They've got some time to run now. Here's the double reverse. Here's the money in the bank. Great house. He's got Collins deep. He's got to get it to him. Collins, he's got it. There goes Collins inside the ten to the five. The money in the bank. I hope Coach Hamrick is watching. Oh, man, what a play. We've, we've tried to run this a couple of times in the last few games, and it's been, uh, you know, diverted early. That time, a couple of clean pitches. Great House gets the ball deep in the backfield, and Collins pulls it in. What a play, Roan County. Ready to go again. First and goal for Roan County. Two plays. 40 by Begler, and then the big 40-yard money in the bank pass from Great House to his teammate, and the Raiders have scored. My goodness, what a change of events just happened. Oh, Sissonville really... You know, they tried to save time, get a good offense possession. Huge play by Great House to intercept it on the last defensive stand. And just three huge plays from the Roan County offense. Begler got free. and I tell you, I'm going to joke with him after this game about dropping that potential touchdown there uh, <laughs> on the carry. But the money in the bank, a beautiful pass and catch from Great House to Collins. And then Begler into the end zone. Roan County going for two. They'll fake the give on the jet sweep. Greathouse running for his life. He'll wait. He'll delay. He'll dump it off to his tight end, Colton Paxton. Everything has changed. The Raiders' defense was on their heels. It looked like they might give up a touchdown before the half to the team that was going to get it in the second half. Greathouse makes a senior play, and then it went crazy. Yeah, just a minute and a half ago, this was a – 10-point ball game. Now it's jumped out. 26-point lead for Roan County. Boy, the game of football is an interesting, interesting momentum. It really shifter, is. And it was a big shift of momentum. Can't oh believe Begler dropped that ball. Uh, <laughs> I, just, I, can't wait to, I can't wait to talk to him about it. No, that's, that's one of those things that <laughs> just because it worked out in Roan County's favor, we can laugh about it, but that was one of those uh, that was one of those uh-oh moments. Boots Blosser, that was uh, easy and fast for us. It uh, took a lot of the field off, though. Yeah, uh, 90 yards, 23 seconds off the clock, three plays, Begler from five yards out, and Greathouse uh, pass to Paxson for the two-point conversion was good. 46 to 20. I'm rarely looking down right now. I apologize to those of you interacting on Facebook with us, but I did look down to see that uh, Begler, <laughs> his sister said, uh, tell him sister saw that one. <laughs> uh, definitely don't let him live it down. Either. Never let him live that one down. Okay, so the Raiders need to hold here. 36 seconds remaining still in this first half. 
Gosh, it's going to be 10 o'clock before this first half is over. Collins approaches, leg in. He'll rip into this one again. That's going to send Fisher over. Fisher breaks on, another guys. tackle. Roan County is not doing a good job of tackling Fisher. He'll pick up big yardage. He's yeah, you got to do a better job as you're getting. You're, you're coming flying down there with all that emotion. You know, you're, you're really wanting to make a huge play for your team. You got to settle yourself down a little bit, break down, and make a, uh, a solid form tackle. Roan County just, you know, not done a good job on the back-to-back -back kickoffs. Oh, did our feed cut out again? Yes, it did on <laughs> Facebook. Oh, we apologize. Sorry uh, about that, guys. We're yeah, it's always a battle. Technology is great when it works. Sometimes it doesn't. So we're trying to uh, trying to get the live video feed back up. Sissonville will have the ball here first and 10, 29 seconds to go, four wide. Taylor going to dump it outside to Arbogast. You better get a hand on this young man quickly. Out to the side, great form tackle by Greathouse. Yeah, good job breaking down. You can't let Arbogast get away from you. We've seen Chad. He's been able to do that all four years playing on defense. He's really been a solid, uh, solid tackler. Not always looked upon to be a defensive player, but this year, uh, senior year, he's really stepped up. That'll bring up a second down and three. 21 ticks to go on the clock. Sissonville did get out of bounds, two wide on each side. Taylor back to pass. He'll dump it off again out into the flat and a great open field tackle that time, Sean Conrad. And Conrad, I'm telling you what, he really, really has come into his own this senior year. One of the best defenders in the state of West Virginia in my masterful opinion. Rome County's going to take a timeout here with nine seconds left. Rome County with a 46 to 20 lead, third down and four to come up. Ball resting about the 45 yard line for Sissonville. You know, Coach Burdett wanted to take that timeout to make sure all the guys on the defensive side are, you know, aware of the situation. Though, don't let anybody get behind you. Especially, you got to keep an eye, a spy, and uh, an over the top on Arbogast because he really has been gashing Rome County. You know, throughout this ball game, just chunking up yards on the ground. He's catching the ball in the backfield. You know, we knew that uh, there was a lot of weapons on this team. And Sissonville can definitely strike quickly. So, Roan County, you know, you've got to, uh, you know, you've got to make sure you do not, absolutely do not let anybody get behind you. Third down and four from the 45 of Sissonville. 9.6 on the clock. Roan County leading 46 to 20. Taylor out of the shotgun, four wide. Taylor rolling out there. He'll dump it off in the flat. He'll pitch it, get it pitched back. Taylor looking for the edge. Boy, they might have missed a hold out there on Arbogast, on Collins trying to get away from Arbogast to make that play at midfield. And they'll get another shot at it. Got out of bounds just under a second left. Raiders are going to uh, send... Lane Epling back deep. He's going to be 25, 30 yards back. They're going to send Great House back there as well. We apologize to those of you who have been tuning in on Facebook. We had 160 people uh, listening and watching when our feed cut out again. Technology just stinks sometimes. Hopefully people can get uh, on our new one. Here we go. Last play of the half, barring a penalty. Taylor. Looking downfield, pump sets his feet. Raiders, it's up in the air, and it is caught. And that'll be at the 20-yard line, and that will be the final play of the first half. Insanity has ensued. At the end of the first half, Roan County with a pick at the 10-yard line. Begler rips off a 40-yard carry, drops the ball out of bounds. The money in the bank from Great House to Collins down to the 10, down to the 5, and Begler on play three dumps it in. Roan County leading 46 to 20 at the half. We'll take a break for our sponsors. When we come back, recap the first half, give you some stats, and check some scores around the state in all three classes after these messages. 6 minutes please
Okay, we apologize to those of you out there in Facebook Live land. It's not us. It's not us. It is the fact that the Wi-Fi just cut out automatically for some reason. But we're back at the moment.
Yes, sir. Sorry. Okay. Check, check, check. Check, check. Check. We welcome you back to County Stadium on senior night, the final home game of the season for Roan County, the uh, final regular season game of uh, 2021. Again, Roan County, uh, we believe, is uh, guaranteed a playoff spot. Uh, we're just wondering where they're going to end up. I'll tell you what, 46-20 to 20 at the... Uh, 46 to 20 at halftime really helps the cause for Roan County. The Raiders, boy, they got off to a very fast start in this one. Roan County took the opening possession after winning the coin toss, as they traditionally do, and uh, it took just three plays for the Raiders to hit pay dirt. Uh, big strikes were the name of the game for the Raiders in this one. They were able to hold the Indians uh, after just one first down for the Indians on their first possession offensively. And once that happened, the Raiders go back to uh, work and it takes just two plays. So five plays on offense, the Raiders had already struck twice. They led 16 to nothing, but the Indians were very, very scrappy offensively in this one. They do have, as what we said, they have a very talented offense. They like to throw the ball. They really put pressure on Rome County's defense in that first half. And the way they did that was first with the pass. They had receivers everywhere, five wide for the most part. They put four quad receivers to one side and uh, load up one side and it just, it really started to stress and strain the Roan County defense um, throughout that first half. Roan County was able, though, to keep the Sissonville Indians within, or I should say not within, but at arm's length throughout that first half. It looked a little bit uh, nerve-wracking after the Raiders off a big kick from Ethan Collins over-pursued Fisher, and the return man Fisher takes it all the way from the six-yard line Back to the Roan County five, and Arbogast jumps into the end zone on one play. And at that point, it was a 30 to 20 ball game. The two point conversion after Roan County jumped off sides was no good. Uh, the good defensive play by the Raiders. But at that point, you thought, man, this is a little bit nerve wracking. The Raiders, though, they go right back to work, go right back to business. They put another score on the board to take it out to a 38 to 20 lead. But you gave the Indians some time. You gave the Indians a minute nine with which to work. They did call a couple timeouts, and it was boom, 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 down the field from the 45 to Roan County's 20-yard line. At that moment, it was a pass attempt from Fisher to the sideline. Shadrach Greathouse, one of those seven seniors honored before the game began, he had an interception opportunity early in the game that was dropped. He did not drop that one as Sissonville, with all intents and purposes, looked like they were going to go in uh, to uh, make it a two-score game. And again, the Indians will get possession to start the second half. So it was getting worrisome until Greathouse picked that off at the 10-yard line. You had 59 seconds left at that point in the half, and you thought, okay, you've escaped disaster there at the end of the half, and then things got really interesting. The first play from scrimmage, Sissonville was not on the field properly. They were still getting lined up. The play was called for uh, uh, Rome County to go, so they pitched it to the outside. Briar Begler got a great lead block from Delk at about the 40-yard line, uh, 30 yards into that carry. At about the 50-yard line, though, when he was heading down the sideline to pay dirt, he just dropped the football. It just fumbled out of his hands. Luckily for Roan County, it trickles out of bounds at midfield. Raiders get another opportunity to go immediately to the double reverse pass, the money in the bank, and it was money. Shadrach Greathouse to Ethan Collins for 45 yards down to the five-yard line. So in two plays, 
Roan County had it down to first and goal at the five. The next one was Begler jumping in for another score. So what looked like, Matt, it might be a very close uh, two-possession game with Sissonville getting the opening kick in the second half. Suddenly is a 46-20 to Roan County lead. They still get the ball to do the Indians in the second half, but you feel a little better now. Yeah, that last couple of minutes of the first half, it really escalated quickly. <laughs> yes. I mean, it was a 30-20 to 20 ball game, you know, and – I was just so impressed with it. the defense has been on its heels for the most part of this ball game, but they really buckled down at the end when it really mattered, and that's what uh, allowed us to jump out to this 26 point lead. <clears throat> Far from over, though. I, I mean, you certainly don't want to start uh, assuming that, that this thing is is in the books because it is far from over. Uh, Sissonville has proven their ability to. to throw the ball deep to be able to establish the run that I, for one, did not think they would be able to. I really did not. I mean, we've not seen them. They're leading rusher all year. They've got three guys that had about 250 yards apiece. That's it. That's not a lot of yards. <laughs> they tend to throw the ball. But if, if that's what Roan County's defense is, is giving you or is allowing you to do or, you know, you found a, a weakness uh, maybe that you can exploit, you know, that's what you got to turn to. And that's what Sissonville did, and Arbogast really has uh, uh, Arbogast us here in this game. <laughs> My goodness. It, it is Quip Friday night again uh, as Matt White. I don't know what he said earlier, but uh, faster than a hiccup. That was impressive quick, as well. Quick, quicker than a hiccup. <laughs> quicker than a hiccup. What's impressive right now is uh, uh, towards the end of the half when things were looking a little bit squirrely for the Raiders, they now have a four-possession lead at the half, 46 to 20 again, Sissonville will have possession to begin the second half. Let's hope that in that locker room right now, uh, the Raiders are talking all defense, trying to figure out the puzzle that is this Sissonville offense. But uh, I tell you what, you got to make big plays at the big times, and that's what Roan County did. Shatter at Great House, the senior, making a, a, a huge play uh, for the Raiders defensively to end a drive late in that one. I think what, maybe what we've done early in this ball game is we've sold out on the fact that they're going to pass the ball, and we're not we're under we we're like just assuming that they're just going to throw it. So when they get those little quick hitters up the middle, you know we're backpedaling a little bit. We're not attacking. We're not getting pressure on the quarterback, and, and that comes from the defensive front. Really has to uh, man up here because you've got four on five. Four guys have to get through that line because everybody else is having to play coverage. So, you know, if you can get some pressure in the second half, uh, get Taylor moving, I think he's a little bit less accurate on the run. So, I, you know, it's, it's up to the line of scrimmage. We talk about it every week. you got to control that line of scrimmage. We'll see if Roan County comes out in the second half is able to do that. It's 46 to 20. Roan County leading at the half. Boots Blosser, how did it happen? All right. We will start with the, uh, the prolific uh, runners of uh, Delkin Begler. Uh, Begler had 18 carries for 191 yards and four touchdowns. Delk had 11 carries for 98 yards and two touchdowns. Shadrach Great has four carries for 39 yards. Um, the passing attack was led by Shadrach Greathouse, who was three of six for 55 yards. His receivers, Lane Epling, was had one catch for three yards. Colton Paxson had one catch for three yards. And Ethan Collins had one for 49 the offense picked up 10 first downs, did not turn the ball over, and held the time of possession 14 minutes off the clock. The uh, team picked up six penalties for 42 yards. The defense was led by Begler with six tackles, Colton Paxson with five tackles, and Shadrach Greathouse with the interception. Uh, the halftime total for the offense, 35 rush attempts, 337 yards, six touchdowns on the ground, passing three of six for 55 yards. They ran 41 offensive plays for 392 yards. Um, the offense was five of six on third down and one of one on fourth down. Uh, we'll switch to the Sissonsville Indians. Their rush attack was led by Arbogast, who was, uh, had nine carries for 50 yards, and two touchdowns, Dylan Lucas had four carries for seven yards. Ethan Taylor had three carries for seven yards. Ethan Taylor also led him in the passing attack. He was 11 of 20 for 139 yards, one touchdown, and one interception. 
His receivers were Jacob Wiseman, four catches, 45 yards. Cameron Arbogast had four catches for 48 yards. And Braden Purdue had one catch for 35 yards and a touchdown. They picked up 12 first downs. They did have the uh, one interception. They had one penalty for 10 yards, held the ball for 10 minutes, and their defense was led by um, Hunter Burdett, who had six tackles, and number 54, we do not have a name for, but he had four tackles. The offensive totals for the Sissonsville Indians, 16 rush attempts, 64 yards, and two touchdowns, and 11 of 20 passing for 139 yards and one touchdown for a total of 36 offensive plays for 203 yards. And their offense was 5 of 7 on third down, and they did not attempt a fourth down. So that's how it breaks down for the first half. Good offensive numbers for the Raiders. I get the sense that Roan County would love to uh, sustain some drives and, as Matt White uh, mentions sometimes, try to limit second-half possessions. The fewer opportunities uh, Sissonville has to uh, move the ball and score, the uh, shorter this game could become in the second half. 46-20, to 20, though, at the half. Roan County leading Sissonville on senior night. We wanted to thank you all on Facebook Live for joining us. We do apologize. Uh, we are having issues up here with our Wi-Fi cutting out. We do have the Wi-Fi fixed up here. Uh, I know that because the satellite is right outside of our door, unfortunately. Technology just sometimes doesn't like to agree with us. I don't know if it's the cold or what, but uh, it just keeps uh, popping us off. We'll keep trying to keep getting back on Facebook Live as quickly as we can. Just bear with us if you all can, and we'll try to keep it going as uh, best we can here. And we're also trying to keep away from getting kicked off of the air by playing music behind the uh, broadcast, so you'll hear it uh, dead air in between uh, some of these timeouts. 46-20, to 20, though, is the score. We come back. Matt White will check some scores around the state in all three classes. What do you got time for? Just need two minutes here, George, that's all. St. Mary's, 13 to 8. Oh, that one's final already? Yeah. Oh, shoot. It just, it just popped up final. Yeah, we're not getting any help from the few teams ahead of us. Yeah, I didn't figure we would. I didn't either. I believe Winfield played that close with point. Anything crazy in AAA? Doesn't look like it. We welcome you back to County Stadium on Senior Night. Roan County's seniors have been stepping up big, as have the two-headed monster of Delk and Begler. Skyler Delk over 1,000 yards in the first half officially for the season, joining his backfield teammate, Briar Begler. Roan County leading Sissonville 46-20. to Check some scores around the state in all three classes, Matt White. Yeah, not a whole lot of craziness in – Triple A, good match up there. Jefferson and Washington, number six, number 14, battle 23 to 13. 
Jefferson has the advantage there. Spring Valley, number seven. They're up 14 to seven on number 11, Hurricane. And the AAA game of the week sees the number 16, Woodrow Wilson, up 21 to 13 over number 12, the South Charleston Fighting with Rose. We'll check double A. Nothing too major at the top. Wayne giving Polka a scare 26 to 20 in the fourth quarter. Polka, the number three seed, number three seed in double A right now. Point Pleasant had a close one, only beating Winfield by three. Final score 17 to 14. The ones we were really looking at, number six, Nicholas County up big 47 to 14 on Pikeview. Number seven, North Marion. That one's final 55 to nothing over Liberty Harrison. Thought that might be one of the games we could possibly get. Did not happen. Robert C. Bird, the number eight. They're up 49 to nothing on Phillip Barber. Still a close one for number nine, Scott. Up eight to six over Nitro. Bonus points we were hoping could possibly get. Not much there. Lewis County, they're falling to Grafton, 48 to six. The AA game of the week, Frankfurt and Kaiser. That one could have some big implications on who gets into the playoffs. I mean, that's a 14-15 matchup. Frankfurt up right now, 28 to 21. Bluefield going to try to sneak in. They're up 20. I'm sorry, 41 to nothing over Mingo Central, and Fairmont Senior 26, East Fairmont seven. Those two normally powerhouse schools have been on the outside looking in most of the year, trying to slip their way in. And uh, maybe those are the couple of teams that could really wreak havoc on the top of double A. Um, one game that we're really looking at here, St. Mary's getting us a bonus point. Hopefully they're up 21 to eight now on number 15, Tyler Consolidated in single A action. A uh, big one for Work County. They're up now 21 to 20 over number 16, Sherman. That's a big one for Sherman. Win and you're in, losing you're out. Buffalo, we want to get a score on that one. They're playing Wahama. Uh, still nothing reported for that game, but you know that's one that Roan County is very much interested in. St. Mary's, Buffalo, those are two teams that can get us some bonus points. When it comes down to positioning, if everybody wins like they're supposed to, those uh, those extra couple of points really make a huge difference. But the score we're most concerned with, Drew, as always, 46 to 20, Roan County, on top of. The Sissonville Indians getting ready to start second half action. Yep, here we go. Roan County will kick off to the Indians to begin second half play. And we may look back at that uh, end of the first half as a big momentum shift for the Raiders as they try to go 8-2 and two for just the third time in school history and march into the playoffs with some confidence. Ethan Collins to do the kicking. Fisher has been dangerous. Back deep at the 20. Yeah, you got to think you want to keep it away from that guy. Just take it short and take your chances with an up man. Collins approaches, leg in. He will go deep right at Fisher at the 22. Fisher will reverse it to Arbogast. Arbogast. Oh, that He's hold? got room to run. Arbogast at midfield. There comes a flag. I don't know who it's going to be on, but Arbogast is heading towards pay dirt. He'll be tackled at the three-yard line. The question is, what is the flag at the 34-yard line? We've got a holding. So they they missed one, Matt White, but they got one over there near the sideline. Arbogast took the reverse from Fisher. The Raiders were out of position. And give Arbogast credit. That kid is fast. He really is, but he wasn't fast enough. Begler tracked him down at the five. But I'm going to bring this one back. You know, There was, a, to me, it looked like an initial hold on about the – 35, 40 yard line on this side. So. I thought that's what we would see the call with, but they didn't call that one. Doesn't matter. That's a huge flag on the Indians. They're selling out. We knew they would with a lot of different things. And uh, instead of having it first and goal on the two, they're going to have it first down and 10 at their own 24. That is quite the flip. Yeah, it really is. As you know, I, uh, you said that. Room County was a little bit out of position, but if you get a hold that far back. Uh-oh. And now we've got more flags flying as one of the coaches for Sissonville is out there chattering with one of the officials, said something about his mama probably, mm, and there comes no another go. one. You're going to add 15 more to this one. 
They said, no, no, you don't talk about the official's mama. Unsportsmanlike on the coach. And add 15 more to this one. Wow. Frustration boiling over after the big play canceled by a holding. One of the coaches over on the Sissonville sidelines was out on the field disagreeing vehemently, apparently. <laughs> and uh, so they're going to tack on some more to this one. Talk about a flip of the field from the two of Rome County to the 12th of Sissonville. <sighs> wow. I mean, that's not a good example, though, to you know set for your team as far as keeping your head in, in, in a yeah, crucial situation. And it's going to hopefully Roan County buckles down here. Well, you've got to take advantage of that. Absolutely. You have got to. First and 10 from their own 12. Taylor out of the shotgun with a motion man. Here goes Arbogast, though. Look at this kid go. Out past the 20, out past the 25. He'll pick up all 15 for the unsportsmanlike and two or three more, and it's just going to be second down and about nine. 46 to 20, Roan County leading. As we begin second half play. Sissonville not doing anything too elaborate up front. They're just uh, getting a hat on a hat, and Arbogast just has the speed to hit the hole quickly. A couple of motion men across the scrimmage line. They'll give it Arbogast. He'll cut it back against ah. the grain. He's got 11. He's got 12. He's got 15. Somebody get a hat on that kid. Well, they tried to pull the guard across the right side of the line. Arbogast cut back the... Linebackers got fooled, got caught out of position. Good job there by Christian Jarvis tracking Arbogast down. We do have a penalty flag. And I think that's going to go against Rome County. It will. Arbogast at the end of the run is personal foul face mask. Arbogast looks a little bit rough, though, in the backfield there. I don't know if he's just cramping up. They're trying to get him fixed up a little bit. He might not be cramped up. He is trying to rotate his shoulder a little bit. A big penalty, and just like that, from the 12 of Sissonville to the 45 of Roan County. It's almost as if that penalty and that extra one didn't count now. The Indians are moving. Well, good for Roan County. Arbogast is going to get a look at on the sideline. First and 10 at the Roan County 45. It didn't take any time at all. They're going to fake the give. I think that uh, Taylor was trying to give that one, and for the first time, Roan County will get to the quarterback, Taylor. It's Christian Jarvis with the sack. I think that was intentionally supposed to be a run play, Matt, and uh, they couldn't get it to uh, the exchange. Yeah, they brought in the freshman in the backfield, Ian Cox. Just not a good communication there with his quarterback. But that's three straight really solid plays from the end spot by Christian Jarvis. That one, that's how I'm picking up the sack on Taylor. Two minutes into the second half, Roan County leading 46 to 20. Second down and we'll call it about 17 back inside of Indian Territory at the 47 and a half. Here's Taylor rolling to the near side. Looking downfield, he's got pressure. He'll just launch that over out of bounds. That's a smart play by the young man. He had pressure. Landon Whited was heading towards him, or he may, Briar Begler, all three, providing some uh, pressure. Yeah, and good coverage down the field as well. I mean, you had Paxton all the way over on the sideline as well as Conrad, and just escorting Wiseman out of bounds. You know, that really is a testament to your defensive backs doing a good job staying with the receivers. But like you said, that was a smart, smart play by the quarterback, Taylor, just to throw that one away. And uh, just take your chances here on third down and long. I don't know how many times I've said it, third down and long, it's an opportunity for the defense. They've got to make good on one of these. Snap back to Taylor, five-step drop looking near side. Now flushed out of the pocket. He's got room to run. He'll take off. Paxton rips him down just past midfield. Great recovery and coverage by Colton there to yeah, limit the damage of the feet of Taylor. Yeah, Paxton, he's been asked to do a lot of coverage from the linebacker spot something he's not you know always been used to but that time did a really good job of recognizing peeling off of his man and making a good solid tackle 
preventing that one only being about a five, maybe six-yard gain. 46-20, Rome County, 9.30 on a stopped third-quarter clock. Opening drive of the second half. It's been weird. Oh, no, he only got three on that one. Fourth down and 14, <laughs> just over midfield at the 49 of Rome County. Taylor, three-step drop, looking near side. He'll dump it over the middle, and that is overthrown, and that is picked off. Ethan Collins steps up big, and that will end the drive of the Indians, the second interception by the Rome County defense in this ball game. Yeah, that one was just a... Had two guys coming over the middle, overshot the intended target. Collins, right man on the spot, did a good job to bring that one in. Big plays by the seniors all around in this ball game. First down and 10, Roan County. The ball resting at the Raider, 38-yard line, leading 46-20, 9-28. As we're into the first part of the third quarter. Double wing formation. Here's the jet from the wing to Collins. And there is Delk out in front. And there goes Ethan. And a flag comes down. Collins heading to the end zone, but it's going to come back. Delk way out in front was lead blocking. Somebody apparently got to a jersey of an Indian. They're Take gonna... away the touchdown. It's downfield, though, Matt. Yeah, but they're going to get Conrad on that one. That was a bogus call. He just had his man sealed on the inside. I mean, if you keep your hands on the inside part uh, of the shoulder pads, you know, you can move your guy around with your hands even if they are extended. I don't like that call one bit. Yeah, you feel bad for Ethan, man. He was off to the races for the touchdown on senior night. It comes back. Again, it was a downfield block, so they will get positive yardage on the play. It will bring up a first down and five at the 44 of Roane County, but take points off the board, that's tough. 46-20, Roane County leading, double wing formation again. This time Russell May goes in motion to the near side. He'll come set, give off tackle, that's Delk. Cuts it against the grain right near the first down line. He'll be about a half a yard shy, I believe. Delk going over the 1,000 yard mark for the season in the first half. Joining his teammate, Begler. Yeah, just what a duo in the backfield these guys have been. 8.50 and counting here in the third quarter. We talked about Roan Kenny limiting possessions. You'd like to have some sustained drives here and limit Sissonville's opportunity. Second down and about a half of a yard to go. 48 of the Raiders. Double wing formation. Begler across in motion. They'll fake the jet to him. They'll give it to Delk. He gets nothing, and he'll be stacked up and sent back. So the Raiders will have it third down and a half of a yard. Yeah, just nowhere to go. Trying to catch the defense looking, bringing Begler across the line. You know, faking that jet sweep. And they hit him up the middle, but you got a third and... Third and short, offensive line. We need about a yard here. Back to the up. heavy package they go. It'll be the third man through. That's Begler trying to bounce it outside. He's got nowhere to go. Raiders will lose yardage. Yikes. Mm. That is not what you wanted to see. After the Raiders making a big defensive stand, it's going to be fourth down and now a yard and a half, maybe even two yards. Do the Raiders get bold and go for it here with 7.30 and rolling up 26 points? 46 to 20 is your score. They will. See if they call Cleveland here, Matt. <clears throat> Try to get uh, the Indians jump off sides. Hard count. Boy, they got one moving, Ooh. but he didn't go across. Close. Five on the play clock. Raiders will reset. They're going to go for it. It's Delk. Hardest run of his career, and there it is. He's got more. There goes Delk inside the 40, backing down to the 35. The young man is an absolute horse. Moose. <laughs> okay, so he's a moose. Still of the four-legged hooven creatures. I'll just stick a yoke on him and let him plow the yard for you. My gosh, what a run by Delk. Hey, he's a horse, a moose, and an ox all laid into one. <laughs> Great run by Delk, and that will give Rome County new life here 
a big fourth down conversion. First and 10 inside the 35 of the Indians now. Raiders lead 46-20, the pitch near side to Begler. Again, Delk out there, lead blocking Begler now. He's loose at the 20, he cuts at the 20, he's going in! Holy cow, what a run by Begler! Was dead to rights at the 20, made a jump cut, and found himself wide open with nothing but green grass. Wow, just keeping the legs moving, uh, just... Arm tackles are not going to bring Begler down, and that's what, uh, unfortunately for Sissonville, that's what was happening. They had, a, they had a bit of an injury there as well. That was uh, 52 uh, Marquez. He came up a little gimpy. He was the guy that would have been in the best position to make that tackle, but it looked like he maybe twisted up a knee or an ankle trying to turn and uh, make a play on Beggs. This has been such an odd game at odd times. It's been interesting and fun, though, for the Raiders. Great house. The old delay pass. He'll hold on to it. He'll dump it all the way into the back corner of the end zone to Dell, or sorry, to Epling. That was nearly unbelievable. Epling dies and couldn't get to it, though. Rome County, though, after it looked like they may not get it on fourth down, Delk a massive run, followed by Begler just doing what that young man continues to do. 52 to 20 is your score now. The Raiders are trying to open this thing up with 6.37 left in the third quarter. Boots Blosser, break it down for us. Uh, five plays, five runs, one first down, 61 yards on the drive, two minutes, 53 seconds off the clock. Begler runs it in from th 34 yards out. And the two-point uh, attempt from Great House to Epling was no good. The Raiders are just like Nova King. Give it time, and they will we, the, they will wear you down and beat you down. And that's what we're seeing a little bit here early on. You're trying to take the wind out of the sails of the Indians before they can even get going. A 32-point lead for the Raiders. Those of you out there asking, Roan County right now is tied for ninth in the rankings. We do not believe that uh, they'll have the ability to make it into the top eight. But if they win, they want to try to hold serve at nine if they can. Yeah, it's all right now. It's just about matchups. If everybody wins out like they're supposed to, but you know, an eight spot would be great and host a playoff game. But we're just tickled to death to be back in it. Yep, here comes another return for the Indians. That time, Christian Jarvis with some uh, power behind him will power bomb Braden Purdue on the return. Jarvis having a really good second half. He's had four straight tackles and a sack. Puts his total up to seven tackles for the ball game. <clears throat> Return of about 20 yards for Purdue. It'll be first and 10 for the Indians at the 43 of Sissonville. 6.36 remaining here in the third quarter. On senior night for the Roan County Raiders, seven seniors honored before this one, and every single one of them has made their mark on this game. Twin receivers set to the far side, one to the near side for Taylor. Now he'll send a man in motion to the near side. Shovel pass in front, looking for room to run, is number four, Brady, Brody Thompson. And the Raider defense does a really nice job addressing that play. No gain on the play for Thompson on the shovel pass. That's a good read there on the defensive line by Toby Copen. Getting himself a tackle. That'll bring up second down and 10 at the 44. Again in motion to the near side. That time it's Purdue. Taylor hands it off. Arbogast, somebody get a hold of that guy. And Roan County does for a second, and all of a sudden the young man squirts through. He's a smaller version of Briar Begler, it seems. He is running with some force here, trying his best to keep his team. I see what they're doing. They're, they're having two receivers on the left side. They're bringing one across. We're playing man on that. That's bringing Great House all the way across the line. Then they're trying to get those little handoff and with a little, pull a, uh, a guard or something out to that weak side. Third down and three. Boy, they had the man open down the sideline. You look over, one of the coaches is just beside himself <laughs> jumping up and down. They saw that they had 
Thompson wide open down the sideline, and that's one of the rare misses tonight, Matt. When Taylor has time to set his feet, he's been good. Yeah, he really he's a he's been a very accurate passer all season. Brings up fourth down and three just over the midfield stripe at the Raider 49. 526 on a stop third quarter clock. 52 to 20 Roan County. Roan County. Purdue across to the far side in motion. The give is to Arbogast. He's got another first down. This is a tough runner, and he'll break another tackle. He's just uh, very elusive, very quick, and he is running very well tonight against this Raider defense. And he's doing it right now a little bit injured. As you can tell, his shoulder still not feeling the best, but uh, he's gaming it out here. 5.15 and rolling, third quarter, 52-20, Roan County. Taylor out of the shotgun, looking near side. He'll plant. He'll fire it deep down the field. That's overthrown. Good coverage again by Sean Conrad. I'd like to go back this season, find out how many times that Conrad has given up a pass catch. I mean, he's just been a shutdown corner with five interceptions, almost six. Yeah, his uh, passes defense has got to be way up there. He's really been solid from that corner spot one of the <clears throat> one of the many many bright spots that we've had on this team this year man second down and 10 from the Rome County 37 for the Indian offense Taylor will send Purdue across far side in motion snap back the give Arbogast he's got more room to run to the outside he goes he breaks another tackle over the 30 yard line before he's run out of bounds for the eight yard gain and Sean had a good beat on him, just couldn't quite get enough of Arbogast. He just does a – he's so low to the ground, keeps his balance well and just keeps keeps moving. You know, like you said, I thought we'd have a lot easier time with the run game, but I think we've sold out too much on the pass. They're going to hand it off to the young man again. He's near the first down mark. He takes some severe punishment, though, on that carry. Some big boys for Roan County landing on top of Arbogast. Yeah, Begler got him around the waist and slung him to the ground. Freshman Vicious. Noah Jett in there on the tackle as well. And the officials are taking a look all the way across the far sidelines to the a chain crew. They're going to bring them over from Sissonville's sideline. 4.55 left here in quarter number three. Raiders out to a big lead, 52-20. to 20. Well, Big thanks to those guys running the chains over there. Kenny G, William Starcher, and then Frank Tucker. Looks like it's going to be a first down for the Indians by the half of a football, so move the chains for Sissonville. This second half got started very interestingly. It was a reverse on the opening kickoff that Arbogast made it down to the two-yard line. A holding call brought it back to the 24-yard line, and then an unsportsmanlike on, an, on a coach for Sissonville took it back to the 12. Three plays later and a personal foul penalty on Roan County, it was down to the 40. But the Raiders able to hold and score. So they lead it by 32, 52 to 20, first and 10 for the Indians at the Roan County 27-yard line. Taylor taking a look over to the sideline. Five on the shot, or if I keep saying shot clock in my head, I'm already thinking about basketball season. Taylor will roll far side. He's got some pressure. He'll get free through, and he will head down the sideline towards that first down mark. And I think it'll depend on where his foot goes out of bounds. Christian Jarvis really starting to apply some pressure now to Taylor. Taylor able to squirt through on that one, so he got the best, uh, the better of Jarvis on that play. But Jarvis is making him think a little bit more now, which is nice because we did not have any pressure on Taylor that whole first half. That'll stop the clock at 424 in the third, 52-20, Roan County. Purdue comes to the near side in motion. That's where Taylor will roll. Looking downfield, he'll square his hips over towards the sideline. That is tipped, 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 and caught for a <laughs> touchdown. What in the world was that? That was an amazing catch by Purdue. 
He tipped it at the sideline, tipped it to himself again, and fell in with the football. Oh, that was uh, a little bit of a mystery. I think it may have been Wiseman. Was that Wiseman? I think it was Wiseman, number nine. But what a catch. Yeah, he <sighs> jumped up, one hand, tipped it, tipped it again. One of the Roan County guys got a hand in there, maybe was going to knock it out. And yeah, somehow Wiseman just comes down with the ball. Sissonville not ready to call this one quits just yet. They're going for two. Direct snap to Arbogast. He's been untouched tonight. That is the best weapon they've got right now, and he will add two to the mix. So it'll be 52-28 to 28 with 4.15 left in the third quarter. Lots of football still to play. 30-second break. We'll be back. <clears throat> During warm-ups, he was doing one-handed like like o Odell Beckham. Yeah. He was going one handed just to give her a shot. Sissonville Indians uh, providing a much like a gnat. A lot of annoyance right now for the Roan County Raiders. They just won't go away. A score, Boots Blosser, for the Indians. Yeah, nine plays, three first downs, 57 yards uh, on the drive, two minutes and 21 seconds off the clock. Um, the pass from Taylor to Wiseman was the uh, touchdown, and the PAT was good. And that makes it, by the way, that two-point conversion, a three-possession ball game instead of a four that's a big play for the Indians. Raiders, though, still leading at 52-28 with 4.15 left. This is where you need some long, sustained drives. If you're Roan County, you've got to limit the opportunities for Sissonville to put the ball back in the hands of that offense. I imagine Sissonville's going to try something here. And there is the onside kick, and Roan County, boy, Clay Walker, the freshman, on the hands team, running after that one. That's a big play by the youngster, Clay Walker. Yeah, a lot of confidence in that young man putting you on the front line in a situation like that. Smart player. Can't wait to see what the future holds for that guy. That might be one of those plays that's lost in the mix of the, of the craziness tonight, but that's a huge one for the Raiders. You huge. get the ball at the 50 now. Raiders will go back on offense here in the third quarter. Trying to check the score that Wayne and Polka final, 26 to 20. Wayne, Wayne upsets Polka. That is the upset of the season at the moment. Double wing formation, Begler across on the sweep. He's got a lead blocker, he won't take it. That time he finds the open hole. There he goes again. Begler over the 20, inside the 10, dives into the corner of the end zone. It takes one play for Briar Begler to do it again. This kid is unstoppable tonight. Wow. I mean, it just like that, you look down, you look back up, and Begler's in the secondary just running free. He got a good seal block on the inside. Uh, Collins was... Out there, he had Delk going to the outside. That's where that play has been going most of the time is trying to get to the outside toward the sideline. Cuts that one back against the grain and is just gone. It's funny to watch Delk walk off the field. He was shaking his head and putting his arms up like he was behind me for a second. I was out there blocking, and then all of a sudden he was gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, like you said, you put your head down to block somebody, look up, and he's 20 yards down the field. Raiders looking to uh, try an extra point here. Epling is the holder. Ethan Collins is the kicker. Snap is high over the head of Epling. Collins will go back and just dive on it as Rome County leads 58 to 28. It took one play, Boots. One play. Uh, yeah, the uh, galloping ghost known as uh, Bayer Bagler goes 50 yards, 13 seconds on the single play. Uh, that makes him 274 yards on the game. Wow. And six touchdowns. Wow. Wow. Madden numbers for Briar Begler here. It really is like a okay. I, I I can probably say that makes up for him dropping the ball 
eh, at the 50. Probably. You still got to give him some grief over that one, though. Nice update here. St. Mary's 36. Tyler consolidated 16. That's a bonus point coming Roan County's way. Also waiting to see Wahama and Buffalo. Wahama had a two-point lead in the second quarter of that one. No current update as of yet. Pretty much everything else, though, falling uh, the way we thought it would. Teams right ahead, right around Roan County holding serve. Briar Begler, 274 yards, six, count them, six touchdowns. That's unbelievable. Could have been seven. <laughs> well, he did. He got it anyway. He got in anyway. That's my bad. He still got but it. But he would have had about 50 more yards, though. This is true. <laughs> Collins approaches. This is a missed kick. It's going to end up squirting down the field, though. And Arbogast, boy, he had some trouble fielding that one. I think he got it between the knees, finally. Yeah. I like that. No return. How about that? Yeah, we'll take that. Roan County struggled a little bit in this ball game with kick coverage. That time the misplay actually it works to our advantage. Maybe but that was what Collins meant to do. Yeah, it's like you said. He'll, I'm sure he'll say he meant to do that. Still four minutes remaining in the third quarter. This game might end at midnight. At, at this, this rate, point. my gosh, it's just uh. Well, it's what happens Lo loads of offense from yeah. each team. 58 on the board for Roan County, 28 for Sissonville. Some quick strikes, lots of timeouts in between. Yeah, 86, of, 86 points. 86 points on the board, Matt. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's a lot of points. I like that Raiders have the majority of those. 58-28. Indians will take the field on offense yet again. From the Sissonville 36-yard line. They'll spread it out. Two receivers to both sides of the formation. Arbogast in the shotgun with Taylor. It will be Arbogast to the outside. Now he'll cut back. He'll break a tackle. There he goes again. Gosh. The Raiders are really poor tackling right now. i got to tell you, this is the worst tackling the Raiders have done all year. And, in fact, it's the only bad game they've had tackling. They have been so great this year, and we've mentioned it, Throughout the season, this is not one of those games. They just are not getting to Arbogast and breaking down very well with him. Yeah, I mean, just – I'm sure he's providing to, that problem, too. Yeah, he really is. I mean, when you the guy's so quick, he gets jump cuts, and you're just left swinging, grasping at air. And, you know, like you said, the run county's got to get to the spot and break down quicker. They'll send Arbogast in motion to the near side. Three-step drop. They're going to launch it deep down the sideline. And the target there, Thompson, got turned around. Collins was right there, though, step for step. Yeah, it would have been a tough play. That one sailed out of bounds a little bit, even if Thompson was able to get a beat on it. So, again, Roan County holding serve here, 58-28, to 3.47 left in the third. Yeah, and add to the fact that 86 points have been scored, the fact that Sissonville is throwing the ball all over the place, and uh, in this second half, a lot of those have been uh, incomplete. This game is just a marathon. I don't care if it's a marathon as long as Roan County ends up winning. Arbogast takes the handoff, and there you go. Who was that? That was Ethan Collins getting Arbogast at the ankles. That a boy, E. He still picks up five yards, but that's better than the alternative. Yeah, we at least got to get him down. So third down here for Sissonville. Yeah, get him down in fair territory. Get the clock, so the running. clock can roll. 320 <clears throat> now and rolling in quarter number three. Arbogast stands in the shotgun to the right of the quarterback, Taylor. Purdue in motion across. Rome County. Flinches at the line, but they do not jump. Snap back, Taylor. Five-step drop, looking near side. He'll dump it out. Arbogast, he's got the pass. Great play by Roan County's Briar Begler, though. Begler now with his 10th tackle on the night. Good job to trailing along behind that play. Making the tackle. Fourth down now. And about three yards to go. So do the Raider, does the Raider defense have another big play in the books? Fourth down at the Roan County 37. Arbogast, nope, he's got the first down. 
He is just gashing the Raiders. Luckily, the Roan County Raiders are up by 30 while that's happening. Yeah, the, the thing we thought we were going to have to worry about so much was the pass, and we've done a really good job, I think, of defending that and just getting lost in the mix is Arbogast, and he's really just uh, overwhelmed the Roan County defense. I'm just glad it's inbounds. 213 and rolling. Taylor going to look to the near side. Slip screen over there to Thompson. Roan County just standing around as Thompson takes off. And now we're going to add some insult to injury here as there is a penalty down. I mean, I was looking around sure. Thompson, and everybody was standing there for Roan County. They just weren't moving towards him. This may come back, that though, somebody for Sissonville. Yeah, it's going against Sissonville. Somebody had uh, – Ori May pinned down to the ground, and I was afraid they were going to get the second guy for that, but <laughs> still talking about it, though, so I guess we'll uh, make sure and wait and see that that is the case. Everybody moving backwards, so it seems as if everybody has accepted that this is going to be a penalty. We're just trying to determine where the spot of the foul was. I'm just still uh, befuddled by... That slip screen that Roan Kenny made, did they think he was out of bounds? I don't know what the uh, – Everybody just let up and started watching Thompson run. Yeah, a couple guys were right in position to maybe make a tackle. He just looped right around them. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what was going through our heads on that one. Let's just say this has been an odd game at times. There have been interesting plays. There's been exciting plays. There's been just things that you wouldn't expect to see for big plays just happening. Yeah, just tons of excitement in this ball game. They got the first down, then took off the yardage for the penalty. Here is Thompson. Roan Kenny not wasting time this time. They'll jump on him quickly. That's a better job. That's Conrad, Conrad Paxton. Conrad and Paxton. Conrad with his fifth, Paxton with his seventh. And they tackle him again inbounds because that is important. you got to let the clock roll here. Roan County needs to limit these possessions as they look to close this Sissonville team out. Down to 115 left in quarter number three. 58 to 28, Roan County winning. Thompson across to the near side in motion. Here comes Taylor. He's going to launch it down the field. Way over. Boy, that is miscommunication as Arbogast was running the chair route. I think that Taylor yeah, thought he might just be running a go route down the seam. Yeah, nowhere to go. It was uh, Collins' coverage on the outside. Lane Epling had over-the-top coverage from the safety spot. Well defended by Roan County either way if that goes inside or out. All right, we'll stop the clock once again. 102 remaining, third down and long for Sissonville. We'll call it third down and 15 from the 38 of the Raiders. Taylor going to look to throw as per usual. He'll launch it out into the flat. Catch is made. Great defense. Great coverage by Ethan Collins right on Thompson as he made the grab, but it is a gain of 13. We'll bring up a fourth down and two. We had well defended. Came over the top trying to knock that one out. Couldn't quite get to the ball, but a good job to play the man. Get him down. Force a fourth down. Let's see if Room County's defense can get itself off the field. Trying real hard to get the internet back up here, folks. Apologize. Yeah, frustrating. Fourth and two. Taylor going to hand it off. Can Roan County tackle Arbogast? They do. He He's right short. near that, but he might be short. That might be the first time and the most important time. There it is. The Raiders will hold Arbogast to fewer than 12 yards on a carry. <laughs> I'm being facetious. Oh, but at a crucial time. You know, you certainly don't want to give this Sissonville team any more life than it has already, you know, already taken in this ball game. Great, great stop by the Raider defense. Now let's just run the ball, stay in bounds, and see if Begler can break another 60-yarder. Yes. 
and, ex and extend the time. The best part about that, they actually allowed the Indians to run a lot of time off the clock. Four minutes, basically. Raiders with possession. That's Shea Harper in the ball game for the first time. A beautiful cut for Harper, and another flag comes flying in late. Well, that was a great jump cut by Harper, who was wearing the number 35 here. And it will be all for naught. Roan County whistled for a block in the back. So that is going to bring that yardage from Harper, the freshman, back. We've mentioned a couple of uh, freshmen's names here. That big play on the onside kick for the freshman, Clay Walker, giving Roan County possession at the 50, helping Begler to his sixth TD on one play. And then we've mentioned Noah Jett defensively in the game a, f a few times. Now Shea Harper getting into it. And Roan County will not run another play in the third. They lead by 30 as we enter the final quarter of the final regular season game of Roan County's 2021 year. 58-28, 60-second timeout. We'll be back. It just won't stay connected. It's not even, the, like the Internet's not even going off now. It's just stopping the feed on Facebook. Don't understand. Well, at least we've got it on recording. Nice. Sweet. Don't have bonus points we can get. Yep. We welcome you back to County Stadium for the final time in the regular season. Rome County on senior night. Winning big right now over the Sissonville Indians, 58 to 28. The Raiders had trouble shaking the Indians in the first half. The Indians uh, came in throwing the ball wildly, and then they have gone to the run game of Arbogast. But the Raider defense making big plays at the right time. They shut down on a fourth and one Arbogast, and they have the ball. First down and 13 from their own 20-yard line. Senior Shadrach Greathouse in at QB. And you've got the freshman tandem in the backfield of Shea Harper. I was going to say and Clay Walker. Walker not in yet. Still, yeah, no, is. Clay yeah. is in there. I, I was, thought that was him. i got to apologize again to everybody out there in Facebook Live Land. This has been just as miserable for me as it has been for you guys. We just keep getting kicked off of uh, Facebook. It's not even now. It was earlier the Wi-Fi. Now it's not even the Wi-Fi. It's just Facebook is shutting down our videos, trying to keep them live for you guys as best I can. Here's the handoff into a pile is Harper, and Harper fighting forward. Good hard yardage for that young freshman. He'll pick up four yards in the last three. We're carrying two big linemen. Yeah, that's what we've been uh, really hoping for with Shea was the, the ability to run hard. He's never had to do that. Now at the high school level, he's got to use that size and strength, and he really uh, he's getting it. He really is. It'll bring up a third down and seven. Raiders need to reach the 34. Ball spotted at the moment on their own 26 and a half. Split back backfield. Here's the pitch to Harper to the near side. Looking for room to run. He will put the level shoulder down into a defender, but he will only manage to get back to the line of scrimmage. So that will bring up a fourth down. But the Raider offense 
has run two minutes off the fourth quarter clock, leading 58 to 28. So a 30 point lead for the Raiders. And we have a whistle. Sideline warning. Oh my gosh. Stuff it, buddy. Come on. Just stuff the it, whistle. It's late. It's cold. Everybody wants out of here. Come on now. Well, we'll see if Katie Nutter can just uh, close up on that side, Judge. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> if don't he you. wants his five minutes of fame, we're going to give it to him, right? Uh, don't you threaten her with a good time. <laughs> so, Roan County looks like they may go for it here on fourth down and seven. From the 26, they'll spread it out. Twin receivers to both sides. Begler in the backfield with Greathouse. Snap is back. Nope, he's going to punt it away, and he will rip into that one. Nobody back now. It's going to take a big Raider bounce inside the 35, down by Collins at the 33-yard line. So a good play by Greathouse again. I could, I could, I think I've said that a bunch tonight. He made a couple of big plays with his legs on a couple of third down and long situations in the first half. He's made a couple of big throws. Punted the ball real well that uh, first half. That first punt was massive. Yeah, just big plays all around for these guys. The seniors have really stepped up in this ball game. You know, Begler with a monster game. Like you said, that's a video game uh, stats there. Almost 300 yards, six touchdowns. Big plays from Delk. Now we're going to get Noah Jet back in on the defensive line, giving senior Toby Cope a break. He's had a really good game up front himself. Sissonville, as per usual, will start out with the pass. They'll dump it out to the sideline. They've got their man upended at the 43-yard line. And I can't tell that far away if it's eight or nine. It's either Wiseman or Purdue. Great tackle by Hanley Mounts. Out there upending the receiver. 58-28, Rome County leading. Second down and we'll call it two. Ball resting just outside of the Sissonville 40 at the 42-yard line. They need the 44. Taylor out of the shotgun. He wants to throw again. He'll go deep down the sideline. Conrad, boy, he mm. had the bead on it. He cut and his feet just went right out from under him as if he were on ice. It's cold out there. It might be like ice at this point. That could have been another pick for the senior, Sean Conrad. Yeah, he played it perfectly, played the inside shoulder of the receiver, found the ball quickly. Like I said, just uh, couldn't keep his footing. If he does, that's a, another big play for that young man. Third down and two. Taylor again out of the shotgun. They'll hand it off this time. Breaking a tackle is Lucas. He's been relatively quiet here tonight, Matt. He is. Uh, he had a couple of carries there late in the second quarter, but it's been Arbogast who has been the nemesis offensively running the ball. Yeah, caught everybody off guard in this game. With you know, I'd be curious to see how many pass attempts they've had. But we were playing the pass early on. I think that just gave Arbogast enough room to work get some seams up the middle and just show his speed and balance. And, and now they're going to go with the power back. Three to the near side, one to the far side. They'll go with that one-on-one -on -one coverage. And just as he goes to the, the ground, the ball dislodged from the receiver. That was a great effort by that young man. I can't tell who it is who took a nasty fall after making an almost circus-like catch. I'm sure if that's Purdue or Wiseman. I think it's Just as soon as he hit the ground, hit, the ball was in his hands, and when he hit the ground, it just got jarred out. I think that's Wiseman. 8.52 remaining, and it's always a great sign when Coach Cody May comes out of the booth with 8.52 left in a contest. That means the Raiders are doing good things. Here's Taylor. He's got troubles. He'll dump it off, and he has got Wiseman. Oh, there go or Actually, that's Purdue. Purdue down the sideline to the 30, inside the 30. Taylor was nearly sacked on the play, and he ends up just dumping it to his nearest teammate, Purdue, who ends up with big yardage. That was 
Tyson Pennant tracking him down. A lot of fresh faces. Absolutely. The seniors here. are out. Yeah, yeah this, this is, is happening against Roan County's JV defense right now. Taylor out of the shotgun at the 30. Five-step drop. He'll launch it out, and that was uh, miscommunicated with Thompson. And uh, Sissonville just seems content to want to make this a midnight end to the ball game. Yeah, I mean, I guess you got to run your offense, but you know, at this point, your offense was Arbogast yeah. running the ball. Why would you go to the air right now? I'm happy they're doing it because it's uh, – well, I'm not happy they're doing Other it. Other than the it's, clock's not running. Yeah, it's taking forever. Raiders leading 58 to 28. It's already 10:07. George, sorry, buddy, you're probably going to have to do Metro News game night tonight because I don't mm -hmm. think I'm ever getting out of here. You might not get game night on tonight. Taylor dumps it off. He's got Thompson in the open. Thompson breaking a tackle past the 20 down to the 17-yard line. That will move the chains, and again, that will stop the clock at 8:28. That was Conrad was still in there. Conrad and Penna again on the tackle. Aiden Burr checking in for Roan County. You already know. If you don't know, now you know. First and ten for the varsity of Sisseville against the JV of Roan County's defense. They'll launch it deep into the end zone. Boy, what a catch. Penna tried to dislodge it. And he gives a nasty shot to Thompson, who gets up hurting. But it did not dislodge the football. That will be a touchdown for Sissonville. Now, pretty good coverage. That ball was just thrown right in between the two receiver, or the, sorry, the two defenders. Burr was on underneath coverage. Penna over the top. And like I said, that was a tough shot to take and hold on to that ball. Narrowing the gap now. 58 to 34, Rome County on top. 8.08 remaining in the ball game. I hope Roan County runs eight minutes off the clock after this. Oh, we can only hope. It's cold. You know, these guys are freezing. When they get in and take a shower, it's going to sting. Indians will go for two. Direct snap, Arbogast. He'll hand it off to a new man in the game, and he's going to be short. Good job by the JV unit, keeping them out of the two-point conversion. 58 to 34, Rome County up big with eight minutes left in this one. 30 second break, we'll be back. I think that was Burdett with the carry. Eight oh eight remaining in this one. Roan County leading fifty eight to thirty four. Boots Blosser, Sissonville, scoring on the JV defense. Yeah, they're just not going to give up. Uh, eight plays, three first downs, sixty seven yards on the drive. A minute twenty one off the clock. Um, the pass from Taylor to Wiseman from seventeen yards out for the touchdown, and Burdett's carry for the two point conversion was no good. Raiders will bring the hands team on here for the kickoff of the Indians. They tried an onside kick. A little bit earlier in this half, the freshman Clay Walker able to recover it. And again, this is still, as we mentioned, a three possession ball game for the Raiders. There's still eight minutes on the clock. Let's not rest on our laurels just yet. Yeah, a ton of time. Sissonville still, you know, varsity offense out there. Raiders might just have to match that. I mean, they might have to bring their varsity back in. Yeah, just to make sure, just to match that score and uh, then rotate the young guys back in. Taylor to do the kicking from the 40. Raiders will back up a little bit. They'll keep some hands guys up front. You see Epling, Delk. Paxton, it'll be an onside kick over to the sideline. That hits off of a Raider, and it just goes out of bounds. That was a nasty 
nasty onside kick attempt. It hit off of a Raider chest and out of bounds it went. It was like, it was that flashbacks of trying to field a grounder at second base over there at Leo Hines Field with that little lip in the, uh, the grass and dirt area, giving Drew a little bit of PTSD. Absolutely. So Roan County will counter. They're going to bring their starters back out. With eight minutes and eight seconds remaining on the clock. They still will filter a couple of youngsters in there, but they're bringing back out the horses. Matthew Schaefer, Jacob Bunner, Landon <coughs> White, and Christian Jarvis. They'll bring in the freshman, Noah Jett, to uh, spell Toby Copen. I believe Copen's out there. You're right. Copen is in the backfield. Never mind what <laughs> I know. And Copen's going to take the handoff, and look at the big boy <laughs> rumble. Six yards for the – Senior offensive and defensive lineman, Toby Copen. Okay. Oh, that's fun. Get the big guys in there. Let them run the ball. They've earned it. Oh, they're going to drop his knee at the uh, 44. Oh. Take a yard off that. Ah, oh, take two. Come on. Give the big guy some love in there. I'll give him four on the carry. That starts the clock. That's the most important thing. Let that thing roll. Okay, the next one up is Landon White. It is next up. Here we go. You know he's getting the football. Go, Landon, go. Come on, baby. First down <laughs> carry for Landon White, the senior. Love it. Absolutely love it. Uh oh, and Sissonville has a man down here. So they'll attend to the injured Sissonville player. 58-34, Roan County trying to finish this one off. 7.24 remaining. And it is now 10.15. And we still show no signs of this thing ending anytime soon. Yeah, like you said, poor George, he might have to be out there at the station till midnight because that's probably – how long we're going to be here at the field at this rate. Might not even be able to get game night on tonight. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we're still going to be on the air at 1140 probably. Good to see the young man from Sissonville jump up. And it's Soto, I believe. Yeah. Gavin Soto. Given Soto. So good to see he's up and walking off under his own power. So the Raider JV offense will come back onto the field here. See if the Indians counter with their second units. So Tyson Penna will run the show here now. And you've got, of course, the two freshman running backs in the backfield, Clay Walker, Shea Harper. First and 10, Roan County at the 37 of the Sissonville Indians. 7.24 remaining in this one. Raiders will go with the heavy package. Penn will hand it off up the middle. And someone gobbled up. I believe that was Clay Walker gobbled up on the play. And the clock will continue to roll now. Roll, clock, roll. And let's just tell, go ahead and tell uh, Tyson Pinna's mother, Kristen, just to chill because he's going to run that play clock down to one second if he can. It makes her nervous she's, every time, but that's the that's the goal. Yeah, she's not nervous about him playing varsity football right now. <laughs> she's worried about him getting a playoff. <laughs> Second down in 10 from the 38 of the Indians. Oh, what? Lights. Jeez, miss. Come on. Oh, and if you are listening right now out there and your lights are on behind the behind the uh, scoreboard, please turn your lights off so we can get out of here. Well, I think that's what a lot of folks over there are trying to do is get out as well because it's cold, it's getting late, everybody's trying to leave. Oh, as if this thing couldn't drag on any longer. Yep. That's uh, somebody's just trying to get out of here. 58-34. <clears throat> they are taking off. Ugh. 
Come on, refs, let's roll this. Beautiful bean roll footage. Roll the beautiful bean footage. <laughs> you read my mind, Drew. 58 to 34 on the longest game in the history of man at this point. Heavy package for the Raider JV unit. And Penna will stand away from his center and stare down the play clock. At least he's under center this time. Yeah, <laughs> not guard. <laughs> Snap is back, third man, that is Harper, and Harper is dropped in the backfield by still yet the oh, entire the varsity game. defense for the Sissonville Indians. Loss of four on the play brings up third down and 14 at the 41 of the Indians. Clock rolls under six minutes now. Well, that was a freshman, Trist. Trish, Tristan Spurlock. Sorry, it's cold. I can't get my tees out. I was going to say, you got, Spurlock. you got Ian Morelli, right? Ian Morelli earlier? Yeah, it was when I was, out. that was That's when right. I was fresh. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. cold. Third and 14. Hand off to Harper. Jump cuts back against the grain, fighting for yardage. He'll pick up a pair, and that will bring up fourth down with 530 and rolling on the clock. 58-34, Roan County on top of Sissonville. The Raiders looking to finish 8-2 for just the third time in school history and do so to bring some momentum into the postseason regardless of where the Raiders end up. Fourth down and we'll call it 12. Penna goes under center once again with three on the clock. Hands it off to Harper. Harper will fight forward. Look at that, man. He's carrying nine of the 11 defenders. He'll get a yard on the play. With 448, the Raiders will turn it over on downs. Please, Sissonville, just run the ball. This one's been pretty well out of hand for the majority of the second half. Raiders with a 58-34 lead. Just want to get out of here, nobody get hurt. I mean, I know you want to make the most of your season, but it, at this point, it's time to just call it off. JV units on the field once again for the Raiders. 